And we are live, I think. Let me know if you can hear me. I, I realize right now that I don't know that I set the mic right. I think I did. I see audio waves moving, but hopefully we're good. How's it going, everybody? Happy Wednesday, uh, July 5th, the first Wednesday of uh, our month. Who's all here today? Let's see. We've got uh, Nice is here, BBs is here, uh, Decay's here, Dutch is in the house, Red Giant, Make RS, PF. Okay, awesome. Audio is good. Uh, still confused. That makes two of us. How's it going? Uh, who else is here? I saw uh, Cooper. It says, first time catching the stream. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, Logan's here. Eggy stopped by. Kenneth. A lot of, a lot of faces today. How's everybody doing? Um, so today, the goal is to power on the 2.4. And so, okay, backing up a little bit. After last week's stream, I spent quite a bit of time on uh, wiring, which I was going to tilt this forward, but I realized I will break the screen, so I'll have to tilt it this way. We'll look at it in a second, but um, I spent quite a bit of time on the wiring. Um, I'll just, let's tilt it really quick. So this is what we looked like underneath the hood. Um, so yeah, I did quite a bit of the mounting last week. Um, I hadn't done all the wiring, and then I was sort of like looking at what we had left to do and time frames, and realizing that next week's stream would mark two months of building this thing. So yesterday I spent quite a bit of time and routed most of the, pretty much all of the wiring, um, did my best to clean things up down here. So realistically, what should be left for today is the bed. I haven't mounted the bed. Um, so mounting the bed and plugging that in, um, flashing clipper, and going through all of the initial checks. So that's that's the goal for today. Mount bed, go through the initial checks. I'll, I'll take you guys a little bit further through um, some of the wiring and how I routed things. I, I didn't really deviate very much from the LDO guide, so it's not like there's anything too crazy. Um, everything was pretty straightforward other than the LED clips. I mentioned this on Twitter actually, but um, the LED clips, which are, let's see. Um, Let's see if you can see them right here. Uh, they're up here. So these these guys, um, Eddie the engineer created these clips and basically they just, you use one per LED and they do a really good job of diffusing the light without wasting any light and sort of targeting it towards your build area. Well, after last week's stream, I printed out 32 of these, which is what I needed, 16 for each, uh, to just discover that they were not going to work uh, in their current form. They were way too small. Um, I didn't actually realize before that instance that uh, there's a lot of, let me zoom in a little bit more, um, that there was quite so much uh, variation in the slots for extrusions. Um, so I don't know where, like if LDO manufactures the extrusions themselves or where they source them from, but it was not gonna happen. So I ended up having to scale them in one direction, basically the direction that the clip portion is um, 106% was the magic number. I tried 102, 104, 106. Um, so yeah, these are really, discovered this build this week, been bringing, uh, binging six episodes best start my 2.4250, nice. Congratulations, uh, or yeah, congratulations, that's super exciting. Uh, yeah, hopefully we're pushing plastic today. So yeah, that was one hurdle I ran into. Um, the other hurdle I ran into was some of the pre-done wires in this kit. So like, uh, let's see if I can show you this. Uh, someone mentioned it last week, uh, but like, okay, for example, oop, let's see, there we go. So this is the little LED PCB, right? So we have 24 volts in ground going into here, and then we have each of our LED strips going in. These wires were just a bit too long. Um, and so, yeah, you could just leave them as is, and you might be fine, but it was sort of an eyesore to me, and I just felt like having wires dangling more than needed is a recipe for potentially uh, disastrous. And so I ended up on these two, cutting and crimping them shorter. Um, additionally, and again, I can't remember who was the one that recommended last week I do it, and I said, no, I'll be fine. Um, the fan wires, um, so last week we were pretty much done with the stealth burner, and the only thing we were waiting on was, um, I had to print out, what the heck were we waiting on? I think we were waiting on the, the clicky um, extender, which I printed out, but. Um, basically, the, the crimps that were on the fans, so both the blower fan as well as... No, I'm lying. I'm lying. Not the blower fan. So the, the hot end fan and the uh, RGB LEDs, or like the NeoPixels down here, um, the wires were too long. There was just too much slack, and 
I, I tried tucking them as best as I could and laying them flat, but there was a slight gap between the face of the stealth burner and the back, which you couldn't really see, but it was bugging me. And I felt like, um, obviously there was some stress being put on some wires. So I also cut both the LED wires and the bottom fan wires and crimped them shorter. I mean, we're not talking like, you know, a, an insane amount, but like an inch or so made all the difference. And then it, it sat on perfectly flush. So yeah, aside from that, I don't think anything else really was an issue. I had to switch things up, but um, that's that's basically the only differences that I've done so far. So um, before we get into today's stream, I did want to show off something super cool. Um, so Dutch developer who is in chat or at least hanging tight um, created a created a product like I, I don't know how long ago it was now, but it's called the BL LED controller and. It's essentially for the X1 Carbon or X1, and we're, we're not sure if it works on the P1P, but hopefully I can test it out. But it's it's like a smart LED controller upgrade. So um, he can correct me if I'm incorrect on any of this stuff, but basically it, you connect it to ground and power, so it has its own power supply. And then I believe the board itself connects to the printer without having to actually hardwire connect to the printer. So like it's through a... Um, through a signal that, that you can tap into on the on the X1 Carbon. And so it allows you to install brighter LEDs as well as it can sort of interact with the printer. And if a print if a print's done, it can glow green like a status LED, or if there's an error, then the printer can glow red. So it's a pretty cool little add-on slash mod, uh, correct connect. Okay, so yeah, it connects using MQTT. Um, I haven't played around with MQTT ever, so he definitely knows a lot more about this than me, but um, it's pretty sweet. And I just wanted to take a second to show it off because, well, that's not right. Um, let me really quickly change, why are we sharing this screen? One sec here. Um, oh, we are sharing not the right screen. Uh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, um, he's got on his website uh, information about sort of you can customize the firmware to do different things. And I think that the firmware side of it might be open source. Um, I might be incorrect in stating that. I'll turn it in action if you want to make your own case. Oh, GitHub source. Yeah, so the source code I think is all here if you do want to make custom uh, changes to it. But I wanted to quickly show off this video and then we'll get into the build. But I want to show this off because he's been working on it and I think it's pretty sweet. So again, like one of the issues with the X1 Carbon is that the lights aren't very bright and especially if you're trying to do nice time lapses, it definitely makes a pretty big, um, it definitely makes a pretty big difference. So yeah, adding LEDs, air detection. So if there's a problem when it parks, it, it can change to glow red, which is pretty cool. And then I think also, yeah, print complete glowing green. So I'm gonna actually be installing this. I ordered the power supply off of Amazon, but the LEDs were just really expensive off of Amazon. So I, I got them off of AliExpress, uh, but I will be doing a video on the main channel um, covering this with a couple other mods, uh, like third party upgrades for the X1 Carbon. So yeah, I just wanna take a second to show that off. So if anyone is interested, um, Dutch is in the Discord, just message him. Um, so yeah. I think it's cool and I think, you know, again, is community member that's been working on this for a while and it's, it's sweet. The LEDs definitely aren't great on the X1 Carbon and the fact that it doesn't void your warranty since you're not tapping into any of the onboard electronics is, is kind of cool. So, <clears throat> sweet. Alrighty, so hopefully I did that justice, Dutch. Uh, again, we will, yeah, I, I'm gonna be doing a video, um, I'm gonna be doing a video covering a few mods for the X1 Carbon and one of them will be It'll be that, it'll be a Garolite bed, and it will be a third-party hot end that takes like CHT style nozzles. So it'll be like a collaborative uh, video, but I'll, I'll go into it more and show it off in that video. I just don't have a time on it because I'm waiting on the LEDs and one other thing. So anyways, um, I got myself the P2. It's an awesome CO2 laser. Oh, sick. Um, you'll have to let me know. Well, obviously you think it's awesome. So I know what you think about it, but you'll have to let me know what you've been doing with it. And uh, I would love to see some photos because um, uh, Sebastian or, oh, I call him Sebastian. So it was his, his Voron name. Um, but the, oh, gosh, what is his actual name? I'm gonna go with Sebastian, but the, the guy on the Voron team that did the print it forward parts for me actually picked up the P2 as well. Uh, and he's been, I think, having a really good time with it. So that's exciting. It's an awesome, uh, it's an awesome CO2 laser. Like some of the specs that it has on it or the features with the cameras are just really, really nice. So, 
Um, I have to share it with my wife, so I try and get as much time as I can with it. Did you, um, did, by chance, did you go with any of the add-ons, like the risers or, or the riser or the um, conveyor? I'm interested in the riser, and I really want the conveyor for doing large acrylic panels for things like printers. The only downside is, is that the, um, ooh, the conveyor system requires a lot of space in front and behind the laser, and I don't have the space for that. And so that's, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that or if I'm just gonna get the riser, but I uh, got all of them from Fabrico, nice. Oh, sick, okay. Uh, I'm printing, so right now, the only things we're printing are, um, there's a mod needed so that we can install aluminum handles on here that came with the kit. And then the LDO kit comes with a brass brush. Um, yeah, it comes with one of these wiper brushes, which I wasn't sure if I was gonna install, but I'm going to. So I'm printing out um, the bucket, like purge bucket and the holder for this, this brass brush thing. So uh, I don't know, we won't get them installed in this stream. It's probably something we'll do between this stream and next week, and then we'll take a look at it. But um, so yeah, let's, let's get into this. Cause I really want to, really want to power this on. Um, I've been super patient and like, you know, waiting every week as we get a little bit more progress but i'm like all right it's been two months i really want power on this printer so um let me flip it over so we can take a better look at the electronics and then we'll move forward with mounting the bed let's see here uh hey polymate uh how's life treating you as a dad it, it's been awesome um sleep i keep saying sleep is the one thing that we're still working on but overall like he's been so rad today's actually his he turned four months today not four <laughs> um but yeah he was born on the fifth so today he is officially four months old which is just absolutely nuts okay let's see if i can get a good angle Ooh. uh this is the this is a 300 uh, i specifically so the ldo kit the 2.4 comes in a 300 or 350 and i specifically wanted a 300 uh, just because of space and I and also um, speed for heating up I just it takes longer even if it's marginal to heat up a bigger bed in a bigger uh, enclosed area and so I um, yeah specifically wanted a 300 so uh, it was not 10k in it was like 9k for all <laughs> oh you got the f1 isn't the f1 the um, uh, the fiber module that's pretty sick Okay, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's really much to show here that's, that's you know, anything too super exciting. Um, the things are a little bit more squishy or squished than the LDO um, wiring guide because I, they, I'm assuming they used a 350 for that. So um, I had to cut, like, the wire channels down a bit more. Also, their kit comes with a, uh, a different USB-C, so, like, Raspberry Pi to um octopus cable and i didn't end up using it i tried to use it um let me see if i can find it actually so i can explain this um do, 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 do. i don't see you where did you go there uh, maybe here it is yeah here we go um so this is the one it came with and i was pretty excited um because it was a right angle USB-C, and this was this was kind of tight i had to slide down the octopus a bit to get this in um the the thing i didn't like is that the way this direction is, this is sticking upwards. And so like, like I can show it, um, it plugs in like that. And although it's not a big deal, I just saw myself potentially whacking it or bending it or damaging the USB port. Um, I don't know, so I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 and in their guide, they're using a Pi 4. So I'm not sure if the USB port directions have switched uh, between the two generations of Pis. I don't think they have, but that, I didn't end up using that because of that um what else have i done uh, i tested continuity on this because i was told that or no no on this guy um because i was told there was some continuity issues with some of these little uh raspberry pi breakout boards so i tested that but yeah everything else is fairly standard down here i don't think i've done anything out of the ordinary um power on the 2.4 today hey major gamer thank you very much for four months i have no idea what the heck is going on with notifications um weird let me see if i can somehow manually trigger it um something minute mentioned <laughs> uh okay they are the same no they have the usb ports on the same direction interesting then mine is like that on my trident with my pi 4 yeah it's probably fine it's probably just me being paranoid but i i don't know like i just saw it sticking up and it had to be on the top one otherwise it's blocking two usb ports and then when it's up here it's sort of like the highest thing out of everything and i just i don't know i could just see myself damaging it so i, I went with the the other one that i already had 
Um, yeah, let me see if I can figure out why that didn't work. I updated stuff today, which is always a terrible idea because <laughs> things always go wrong. Let's see. It doesn't show your... So weird. Like, let me see if this works. So it says Dan... Okay, so things are working. For some reason, it didn't. Your your four months didn't connect. So we'll do we'll do we'll do this. We'll go here. Uh, I, the confetti is working again. So now the confetti goes on and goes off with the click of the uh, click of the button, which is great. Um, hey, uh, Jose, thank you very much for the five months. I don't know if notifications are gonna work today, but we're gonna do our best. Um, just want to express my admiration for the neat wiring. Thank you. I appreciate it. I I mean, I think it's a little bit. Um, a little bit cheating with the um, the wire. Or I, I can't think of what they're called. I just cable raceways or whatever they're called. Um, it doesn't really makes it a lot easier to hide your mess. But I did put a lot of thought still into routing things as neat as possible, and I am quite happy with the way this all um, panned out. So uh, there is also one thing I noticed. So they have these like keystone um, skirts. At least this is what came with the printed forward parts, and it has two two keystone slots yet. Um, the kit only comes with an ethernet like extender. So I'm probably gonna be extending one of the USB ports to here, possibly, um, or I might do it on the front side because that probably makes more sense. But uh, it's on the back, so there's an empty hole right here. I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. Uh, I did the same on my cube. Uh, wait, did the what, say what? Oh, you mean like the routing? Um, will this be enclosed? Yes. And if so, what is the standard Voron enclosure panel material thickness? Um, I think they use acrylic, but it might be, uh, where the hell are my panels? I think they're my closet. It might be polycarbonate. I, I'm sure that, um, maybe Aaron can verify that. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Uh, make, make rest. Thank you very much for the 10 months. Cheers. Um, I don't know what's going on with all of our notifications. It's making me, making me sad. Um, do I need to log out? We're just gonna, we'll have to manual, um, Everybody gets manual things today, so we'll do air horns and some confetti. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, Make RS, for 10 months. Cheers, I appreciate it. Uh, and then I'll, we'll go back up. And for Jose, you get an air horn. Uh, well, you know, you get cheer. We'll do standing ovation. <laughs> thank you very much. So you get personalized notifications today. Um, hey, what's going on, Rick? Oh, acrylic. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it is acrylic then. Uh, neat wiring is so much nicer when you have to work on it later. I wish I did the cable raceways on my early builds. Yeah, I'd never used them prior to the LDO kits, but they are definitely nice. So we should be done down here. Uh, I'm not going to put the actual panel on until... Um, I'm not going to put the panel on until we verify, obviously, that things are working, and we still have to probably plug a few more things here, here and there. But because of the fact that the bed uses these wagos, um, we should... We shouldn't have to go down underneath the bed, uh, underneath the, I'm sorry, underneath the deck to get this bed installed. So the other thing is, I don't know, I think we'll wait on, man, I don't know. Part of me thinks we should wait on Nevermore and just fire things up as is because I can add the Nevermore after. But then the other part of me is like, maybe we should just put the Nevermore in. Um, we already have it printed. What do we think? Should we do Nevermore or should we... Hold off on Nevermore and just get the bed installed and fire this thing up. I'll let everybody, let's let's do a poll. We haven't done a poll in a long time. Um, are those printed wasteways or store-bought? They come with the kit, yeah. They, they they are not printed. Printed's actually nicer because you can get, um, you can get custom, you know, colors and you can make the size better. I, uh, I chopped, I chopped the ones they came with down just using scissors and they don't look that great close up. So uh, let's do a quick, do a quick little boat here because we don't we haven't boated in a while on anything uh nevermore we'll just keep it simple because it's hard to type uh nevermore and we'll just do now versus later all right there we go we'll leave that up for a moment <clears throat> Uh, bedpan mod is a huge quality of life improvement. Uh, bedpan, do you still need bedpan mod even with Nevermore? Because I feel like Nevermore should help to circulate some of the heat around. If we're gonna do Nevermore now, I'll let this boat go on um, for a minute or two here, but let me at least go to the garage and grab the bag of carbon I have from when I purchased it before, because we're gonna need that. So give me one second here. Got my cold brew, all right. 
Spear back, please go grab the carbon. Now you don't need it, but it's oh, it, yeah, it's hot. Spear, we're at seventy one percent. What's it looking like? the bags 450 oh my gosh bed fan is usually five oh my gosh that's crazy um they were useless or whenever more is out you didn't feel like they helped with at least the stent like the smell i don't run bed i don't run bed fans anymore lots of folks do uh i've never noticed the smell of abssa uh at all so the filter aspect oh gotcha yeah, I definitely smell it. Um, and Evermore can be run with or without carbon to help heat up the chamber. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, it's, yeah, we're definitely gonna do some mods uh, at some point here, but for right now we'll do it stock. So, okay, we're definitely doing it. There's 69% voted. Uh, that's funny. 69% uh, voted yes. So that feels very appropriate. So then the next question I have is, do we want to do, we need help picking color scheme. So. Um, it's, this is what's going to be visible from underneath the bed. Just basically the top portion here and that's it. So, uh, the options we have are just all black. So it's, you know, like really low key and not really visible or we have bright red. Um, let me back out a little bit so you can see what it would look like. And, and again, the whole thing isn't going to be visible. You're, you're quite literally only going to see the front vent part of it. But what do we, uh, uh, what do we want to do? Bright red, all black. Yeah, summer sensor. Okay, let's let's do let's do one more pull here. Uh, start pull. Um, color. Red, black. I'm sort of indifferent. Um, I think that it looks really loud. Uh, like if the bed wasn't going on top of it, I wouldn't like the red. But because the bed is going on top of it, and you're only going to see the front of it, I don't think it'll look that loud. So. We'll let this run for a minute here. Uh, and I should probably pull up the Nevermore, uh, pull up the Discord. Nevermore. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Nevermore, GitHub. V6. What's new? Print materials, support removal. Okay, so I did all the support removal already. Tune it in the bottom right, I think. Yeah, support removal should be good. The lid area has a single support piece. I removed that already. Electronics, wiring options. Okay. Oh man, it's a close vote, 51%. Uh, am I the only one with ultra low volume? I think so. Raise your, raise your volume up. Uh, with a little bit of, sh yeah, I think with a little bit of showing, if more showed go black, I kind of feel the same way. Let me, um, for fun, let's, let's mock this up a little bit more. Cause this might, this might sway one way or another. So this is how it's going to look. <laughs> don't ram, don't ram your, uh, so that's, that's basically what we're going to see is just that sticking out. So do we like the red? Let's let's do both of them. So we got our little red, little red action there, or we've got the discrete black. Audio is low, really? I haven't changed any audio settings and looking here, um, 
It looks fine on my end. Black makes the screen pop more. Mmm. Ooh, we're at a 50-50. I'm torn. Yeah, audio's fine. I, I haven't changed any audio. Um, I mean, I know someone, two people have said it's low now, but I haven't touched audio. And I'm looking at the levels, and they're, they're yellow, which is where I want it. Like, they're not peaking, but they're not low. So, change from red to black. Okay. All right, we'll let this run for, like, 60 more seconds. Ooh, now red's winning. Or I, it's, like, tied neck and neck. So, okay, here we go. Again, we got black, nice and discreet, right? And then we've got, we've got red, which is popping. I do think that, in, in my opinion, I do think that the red might take away from the screen a bit. Like, the, the, it kind of makes the screen pop a little bit less. Versus having black here in the screen center just kind of stands out a bit more. Sound is a little bit lower than usual. It is quiet every time I watch. Interesting. We can pump me up. Um, let's see. Audio mixer. Let me see here. Okay, so let's go advanced audio properties. And we are on road wireless, no. Yes. Okay, so I can bump me up to, let's see. All right, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. We are two dB higher now. Is that louder? It should be louder. Testing one, two, three. I only bumped it two dB because I don't want to go crazy with the volume. Uh, many have said they voted red, but switched to black means black wins. Oh, you can't re-vote? Ooh. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. It's just a small, <laughs> I don't hear a difference. <laughs> uh, I'm torn. All right, I think we're going with, I think we're going with black. I know it says red, but that's a good point because I don't think you can re-vote. Um... <laughs> uh, red's, now red's creeping up. Restart the vote, red wins, plus one. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, a bit louder, it still seems a bit quieter than other videos. Red is good. Black Duck will get all over it anyway, and we'll look dirty. Okay, we're doing red. Red won the red won the poll. So, in in the defense, this isn't like the uh, biggest deal ever because we can absolutely. It's only held in place by magnets, and the fans are on the other side. So, if we need to, we can always swap this out at a future date. We'll we'll do red for now. <laughs> One for black, two for red, plus two. Yeah, red it is. All right, we'll do red. Thanks for playing, folks. <laughs> All right, so I think that the bomb is the same between the two, and the key difference has a very heavy bed. I think the key difference is that we don't need to destroy the fans for the new version. So uh, let's see, we've got our Nevermore V5 kit. Well, I'll, yeah, we'll have to alternate. <laughs> All right, so we got our two fans, and I like the fact that, again, with this new version, you shouldn't have to destroy the fans because I'd rather not break fans. Um, so the options for connecting is a single JST two pin. Solder both fan wires to a single. So what does this kit come with? So there's two fans, screws. What is, is this what it's, so are we deep, are we deep pinning it and then soldering to this? What is this? I don't know that I love, I don't know that I love that. Um, interesting. Because they give you, they give you this. Like this is the plug. So this, so our options are either cut all of them or you know what? What we could do, I have an idea. I have an idea. So my switch wire, uh, I destroyed the enclosure on it because we're not, um, we are not running it enclosed anymore. It's going to be open, probably just going to use it for PLA, PTG, and then ERCF stuff uh, because I have enough enclosed printers now. We just don't need it. So I can steal this. Why don't we just use this? That way we don't have to destroy anything. 
because um, I'm not going to be using this anymore. So we can just mount this to the side and then I will um, I will cut the end off of this. We'll, we'll basically just crimp this guy. It'll be much cleaner than that that uh, breadboard. So. Uh, JST connector is soldered to the board. Yeah, I think we'll do, I think we'll go with this because it's, uh, I just happened to see it on the ground yesterday and was like, oh, cool. I didn't lose that. So um, let's first do everything else. So cut the fan wires, put the fan wires together, yada, yada, yada. Single JST two pin, triple JST, print the JST holder, insert to create a triple pin for it, connect the fans without cutting the wires by daisy chaining to the Flintum JST port. Note that the thicker, longer wires, just turn on the fans, but I need to go complete me completely filled with wire. Um, the new Nevermore that you're using uses Wagos. Oh, really? This is the, I'm looking at the instructions for it. I don't see even, I don't see that listed um, as an option. Wiring options. Oh, dual, oh. Dual Wagos. Hmm. Is there a specific, um, do I need to print out something for that? Let me see here. Oops. Because I have I have my own Wagos that we could use. Uh, let's see. Cartridge, Wago mount. Uh, okay, so we do need to print out. Or is that is that in here? I can't remember how I got this on. Uh, printing on the V6, V6 is very cool. Printing a V6 right now, yes you do. Yeah, yeah, let's just do, let's just do what I've got on the JST board. The Wagos are cool though, um, and we, I would probably go that route if I didn't have this little board. So, anyways, let's go back. Support removal's done, cartridge, plenum required, wiring options, cool, cool. Triple, JST, and Wagos. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's open this up. Hey, Carl. Uh, no, they just press fit on the side, or at least they did. Oh, really? Maybe the Wagos are simpler. <laughs> um, let's see how much length we have with this wire here. So let me let me grab a flathead so we can pop the cover off here. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, that's gonna break the slot. We need a bigger flathead. Let's do. do, do, do. All right, let's see if this will do it. Why is this so tight? There we go. Okay, so direction wise. Yeah, these wires should be long enough where I think we can get them out of here and we can just use that little connector that I found. Uh, do you like Slick 3R? Slick 3R, like the classic slicer? <laughs> I haven't used that in really, really long time. Uh, I'm trying to see direction wise. Okay, so these go in. When they use 4012, you can just feed fans one, one. <laughs> Is there any sort of, there we go. How do these, how do these stay in place? Oh, there's clips. Okay. Uh, how do these clips go in? Okay, so it looks like these clips, I don't know how well you guys can see this, let's see.
There we go. So this should go like this and just drop in. Maybe. There we go. Tight fit. Okay, so yeah, basically there's a a little clip, almost like a spring, it's almost like a spring clip with a dovetail that goes in the bottom there, that, that's what holds it in place. So we got one in, let's get the other one in. You should remove the remaining supports. Wait, what remaining supports? I thought I did remove all of the supports on this. Yeah, I did remove the supports. Hey, what's up, Lee Smith? Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the supports are removed. Um, if not, let me know, but I, I'm pretty sure I went through this initially and removed all the supports. Okay, so this one goes right here, same direction, and then we need our other uh, where is the other little spring I hope I have the, uh, I hope I have the other piece I need. Uh, I don't see it. Interesting. I'm pretty sure I would have printed two. Um, uh, do I think, do I think it will be switched on? Yes. Uh, can you camp it? We can't see chat because it's the white bench. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this piece really quick. Um, I'm 99% sure. I printed out what I needed, so something tells me it might just be in this bag. Stump out the stuff. Panel clip, panel clip. It's definitely one of the downsides of, uh, we'll need that. Building it over the course of a month is that I've done so much stuff and taking this in and out of the bag so many times that it's really easy for a small piece to go missing. Yeah, I don't see it. <sighs> you know what? No, I think... I feel like I had it inside of... Did I drop it right now? Hmm. Uh, yeah, there's definitely support on the front and the duct blocking the screw hole. I don't see it. There's screw hole there and hole there. I don't, I don't see it. But yeah, I'm kind of bummed out about this piece. I don't know. I don't know where it would have ended up. I thought I had everything together so we might be doing oh we just fired off on the oh. it's kind of disappointing let me uh See, I'd lose so many parts trying to do a build one day a week. <laughs> there are the two magnets on the left side. To the right of the two magnets on the left side. I'm not seeing it. Okay, so 
think what I'll do is I'll run to the garage, load up a spool of ABS and a printer, and we'll send it off to print. And we'll probably just continue along then with the bed because I don't want to stall because of this tiny piece. <clears throat> I'm here for the magic spell. Thanks, turtle. Yeah, that's odd to me. I'm pretty sure I kept all the pieces for this build or for this um, Nevermore inside of the inside of the plastic. So. a bummer okay well let's get the bed mounted then at least i know we're going to use this and again i just need to print out one more clip okay so let's jump over here where is okay so bed I feel like the bed should be pretty quick too because it's already prepped uh... here we go Okay, print bed. So I know that the, uh, the LDO instructions basically tell you to skip a huge part of it. Let's see. So we're on page 53. Uh, remove the for applying the magnetic sheet, carefully trim the holes. Okay, let's, let's see what we're working with here bedwise. Uh, I should get back to designing my Delta. Yeah, a Voron Delta would be really cool. I love Delta printers in general. Uh, you'll find it when you go to mount it to the frame. Yeah, I'm just not seeing it right now. I'm sure, again, once I'm trying to put things together, I'll see it, but it's definitely not standing out to me right now. Okay, so let's peel this off. The um, PCB, so the PCB is already mounted and the fuse is already mounted. So we don't have to do that. We basically just need to clean off this top piece and mount or not mount, but um, adhere the magnetic sheet to it. Uh, let's see. Remove the protective film from the bed. After applying the magnetic sheet, carefully trim the holes for mounting the bolts on page 59. Sheet goes on. Okay, so basically once we get the magnet on, we need to cut these end pieces out or these little slots. Um, the things I'm curious about here is so these should be easy to cut. I think with an X-Acto knife, I should be able to slot these out. The holes I'm kind of concerned with are the three holes here, but those aren't used, are they? Something tells me this is the exact same bed they're using for the Trident as well. Um, is that accurate or is that not accurate? Let's see, so there's three T-nuts. Three bolts there. Yeah, I don't think those holes are used at all. Wire pass through. Okay, sick. So yeah, it shouldn't be that hard then. I think that again, that they're probably using the same aluminum bed uh, or this mix six bed for the Trident as well. So for the Trident, we would need to do that. So let's start off by wiping down this to make sure there's no crud on it. Grab a napkin. Yeah, this is a this is a really thick bed. It should be relatively clean since that cover was on it, but still, we've taken covers off before and had beds not be very clean, so do one more. 
put my little light down. Okay, that should be good. All right, let's get our magnetic bed. And make sure it should be the exact same in all directions. Okay. Part of me wants to move the printer while we're doing this, just so that way I kind of have leverage. So let me, um, let me do that. Okay. So the way I usually do this is peel off a little piece, mount the Nevermore first. I, I need, I don't have the, um, I don't have, you can use the extra hole from the trident mounting for attaching a bed edge thermistor so you can see the heat soak. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, maybe after we'll add that then. I didn't add, um, so there's a thermistor. It comes with a thermistor for the tool head and I mounted it on the stealth burner and I didn't like the way it looked at all. Like I, I just thought it looked really out of place. So uh, I took it off and I'm not sure if I'm going to run with the thermistor on the stealth burner tool head or if I'm going to have a different location for the chamber thermistor. But I just did not like the way it looked. To me, it, it just, it looked really out of place. Okay, so usually go like this and start going back and forth. Then with one hand, I start pulling the cover. Yeah, the issue with the Nevermore is that, um, is that I don't have that second spring. I mean, we can fire it off and have it done probably in like 15, 20 minutes, but I think I don't want to, I really don't want to hold things up when we still have so much to do. I can do one last quick, um, I'll let this sit for a minute before I take the X-Acto to the corners. And while I do that, I'll look one more time for that clip because I know I printed it and I know it didn't get legs and just walk away. So it's possible it's on the ground here somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. So, um, So we've got LEDs, LEDs, we've got the risers, definitely not here. Okay, so yeah, it's Could it have ended up inside of one of the hardware bags? Not in here. Not in here. So the last place it could be is with all these parts that I dumped out. I'll, um, let me load up. I'll run to the garage, load up a spool of black ABS and see if we can't get it going. Um, let me grab let's see. Polymaker, Polylight ASA. Yeah, let me, let me run to the garage, see if we can get this going. I'll be right back.
Okay, let's fire off this prince, and then we'll cut the bed. So we're at least doing two things at the same time. So one sec here. Um. Okay. So nevermore, nevermore. B six. What are we looking for? It's not the lid. I'm not seeing it. Cartridge, cartridge. B6. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I loaded up. I loaded up some filament. Is it because it's part of this? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I definitely printed out two. There's not even a way. Um, let's see here. So this is what we're printing right now on the P1P. So let's go prepare. Let's go control all delete. Let's load up the 2020 extrusion version. Okay, so, so this is treated as one object. I don't think split. There we go, okay. So we'll just print one so we can go as quick as possible. Range, device, X1. I loaded up the black ASA. Let's sync our, yes. We'll use our ERCF settings. We'll use, why does it show so many pieces? Oh, that's weird. That's odd. Is it because when I split it? Weird. Why is it showing up? It doesn't feel right, but all right. We've got you. It's gonna be generic ASA, print with ERCF settings, slice plates. Generic current system may run out of memory, a bug may occur. Okay. Interesting. Something tells me that this model is glitching when I'm trying to cut it up. So let's see if we can do something different. Um, ERCF is the Enraged Rabbit. It's just a profile I made for the ER, um, Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. It's the multi-material. It's basically just the standard Voron settings. Um, wait, for the chamber through Mr. Mount. What? A close one? Oh, sick. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know why when I broke it up, it's being weird. So let's see if we actually, if we cut this, uh, where, cut. See if we do a manual cut, if that makes it not act so weird. It's not what I want to do.
Okay. <laughs> we're having we're having technical difficulties. Let's see. Click on you, click on cut. Great. We need to change this so it's vertical. Yes. Now we need to move you so that way we're off the side. Yes. Perform cut, keep upper, keep lower. Sick. There we go. Alright. Cut. Nope. There we go. The only reason why I'm doing this is for some reason when I tried, let's see if this error is out on us. An error, okay, so something's bugging out with uh, Orca Slicer is what it seems like. So let me close this. Current project is in two changes. You want to continue? No. Super weird. All right, so let me go here again. <laughs> for one tiny part. Uh, what such views? How's the bamboo lab? Bye. Uh, I use primarily Orca Slicer and Prusa Slicer. Alright, so we're not in the latest version. It shouldn't be the issue. Device, X1 Carbon. Oh, maybe that was the issue. X1 Carbon, 24 nozzle, yes. Should be able to just flip model objects. Click away or hit escape. Click on you, delete you, delete you. Okay, this should work. I don't know why a second ago it wasn't. And I don't see this is what's trip what tripped me out, why it's still showing that there's so many objects when there's only a single object. So we should be able to go like that and go. Mercury one, profile, slice. Yeah, something's up. I don't know, this is the first time I've ever seen this error. An error occurred, system has run out of memory, a bug may have occurred, bad allocation. All right, we're gonna wait on Nevermore. <laughs> Nevermore does not wanna happen right now. So I'm not really sure. Try printing the STL before slicing, it might be a bugged edge. Gotcha, okay. Fix model. Mm, still doing it. One, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. One other thing. Let's try one last thing. Let's close out of this so clear it hopefully. Um, open Orca Slicer one more time and see if I do the cut method if it works. But something's going on. Uh, what if you just drag the part onto its own build plate? Well, it's the issue is is that. Um, So it looks like the models were exported together. So I don't think I can, yeah, so I can't move. Let's see if we try a cut again. It's definitely being very odd, this model. Um, nope. Not what we want to do. 90 degree. Okay, it should be vertical. Keep lower part, keep upper part, cut to parts. Okay, that worked. I, something about that file, when it was splitting it, it was not liking it. Um, let's see if we can do one more cut, because I don't want to. We don't need two of these, and we're trying to go as quick as possible. That was a weird one. I don't, I've never, um, never experienced that before. Okay, let's make sure we use the right material. So three is ASA. So we got, X1 Carbon printing on textured PEI, we're using, that's not technically correct. Uh, let's see, let's sync with our AMS. I don't know why it says Bamboo ABS, but that's fine. It's not technically that, but uh, this should be good. We don't need, we definitely don't need a brim. Uh, let's see, we can go outside brim. 
if we want to, just for insurance. Although that's doing the exact same thing. Outer only, inner brim. I think we're just gonna no brim it. 16 minutes, all right. Uh, no. Why is this not? Only the AMS slots loaded with the same material can be selected. There we go. Okay, we're not doing flow calibration. We'll do bed leveling, but yeah, there we go. That was wild. Uh, over faster than it's taking to slice it. <laughs> Uh, don't forget to change the print of the slicer. Yeah, we should be good. We're printing on the X1 carbon and it should be going to the X1 carbon heating. And I already started the bed preheat, so it's already at 90C. That takes the longest, so we'll, we'll be, that should have helped speed things up when I was out there. I already set it to 90, so that was odd. I've never, I guess I don't normally have to split models like that, but I, I've never had an error, that error, uh, or seen that behavior when splitting up a model, so that was odd. Uh, you're printing with a boo. Why do you have the Mercury One profile? Uh, the Mercury One profile is just basically the equivalent of the Voron profile. So, um, 40% infill, five, four or five walls. That, that's all it is. Yeah, the uh, Mercury. Well, although the Mercury would have no problem printing this, but it's not enclosed. Okay, let's. While that's happening, let's cut on, uh, cut the tabs on the bed. <clears throat> okay, that was a fun detour. <laughs> hey, what's going on, pushing plastic? I wonder when you'll be able to enclose it. Oh. Uh uh is there some info you have some info on the the new frame for the mercury hey what's up zombie i love that bed so much yeah it's um <laughs> it's a very beefy frame so before i just take an exacto knife and make little cuts here does anybody have any other recommendations for what's a better option if not we're just gonna make some cuts basically just going to not cut myself but yeah go starting right here and just sort of slice around but if anyone has any other recommendations before, we'll get okay, them in 60 seconds. Uh, I have no new info, just, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited for the enclosed beefy frame. It looks awesome. I know Luke, uh, or Digital Dragon, has a Mercury with that new frame. Teeth? Oh, God. The burring tool? I don't know if... I don't have one right here. I just don't know that um, that'll work. Hey, okay, so notifications are sort of working. Uh, PF, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Um, Ch uh, Chikaro, you got one. Red Giant, Timor, uh, Jerry, and Ron. Thank you, PF. We'll do, uh, because it doesn't actually do one for you, we'll do some confetti and air horn. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, PF. All right. So we're not using teeth. <laughs> um, we're just gonna use the exacto, I think. All right, here we go with my surgical precision. It's not very visible, is it? Once the um, once the pieces are in place. Oh shoot. Okay, we need to go further in than that. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna be very visible, so It also helps if your Exacto has a has a good blade on it. Mine is not need new blades for this. Um, yeah, I tend to fall back on using Exacto as well. 
Uh, why am I doing this? Because the um, the magnet sheet covers the bolt holes, so we need to be able to secure this to the frame. So we're just cutting where these little slots are. So that way we have access to the bolt holes. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look terrible. And yeah, PEI is going to be over it for 99% of it. It's not terrible. Once the bolts are in here though too, I don't think it'll be that bad. Uh, nine months crazy, I was crazy once. They put me in her... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the nine months, Alien. We'll go, uh, let's see, it's confetti and a little cheer action. Thank you, thank you, Alien. Uh, I don't get notifications. <laughs> no, 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 we'll do, we'll do, we're doing manual notifications today. Yeah, so I'll show you a little bit closer up of what, uh let's see it i feel like it did a pretty decent job of following the design of it um 3.5 millimeter drill from the back i guess that's not a bad idea either huh and then a uh, five millimeter reamer from the front i guess if nothing else if it ever needs to i can just swap it and try a different method but for now this is going to be this will be fine i'm sure i it, should be an issue. I've tried a few different things. I, I don't know if you remember, but on the rat rig, um, when we were building the B minion, I attempted, <laughs> I attempt, it was before I picked up the, um, uh, like a punch, a hole punch kit, but we tried to do the holes with a laser, like cutting through the mag sheet and it technically worked, but boy, did it create a bunch of, um, it created a bunch of micro cracks in the magnet and it just sort of fell apart pretty quickly. So it did not work very well. I'll go fairly quick right now, um, but I think, I think later on I might spend a little bit more time to just align it perfectly or as close as I can get it to the edges because it, it's, it's actually looking pretty decent. But I think if I spend a little more time, I can make it even like look a little bit more legit versus a <laughs> versus a hack job. Let's see. There we go. All right, one last one. Um, if I had some, I'd try using some brass tubing as a hole cutter, which uh, works great on softwoods. Interesting. Still need, to, uh, pick, still need to pick a different color for chat on screen. We did, well, we did add, um, we added an outline to the text. So it's definitely more visible than before. But yeah, the, um, the issue is is white looks the best for readability. Uh, but the issue is, is that this, is white uh, and we use it fairly often. I mean, for every build, although technically speaking, I guess we haven't needed it for a bit, right? Like we did the frame parts, which is the, which was the focus of using the square or the hard surface. And then once that was done, we didn't really need it. So I could have taken it off. Okay, that should do good enough. Let's get one last little slit right here. Drill bit definitely would be cleaner. Luke, your, your method is probably better than this, but that yeah, should be fine. Okay. 
Uh, you can put a semi-transparent dark background on the text area to help with. Yeah, I was um, I was talking to Steve because we're so we're slowly, hopefully, getting closer to the VZ Build series. So we were chatting over the weekend, and uh, I got to see some of his stream set up, and um, he has he has a background on his that definitely makes his text pop more. Okay, yeah, I think that's good. We'll call it with that. Um, I don't think that the part stuck. I think it needed a... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. What is it doing? Okay, so we're still bed leveling is what's happening. I'm looking at this, it um, I didn't see anything on the bed, but there's a little bit of orange on the nozzle. I was printing with Polylite ASA, Galaxy ASA for another printer project. So just wanna make sure this starts off right, cause this is what we're waiting on. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be building a 235. Um, yeah, we're gonna be building a 235 BZ. Maybe a chat background with our opacity. Readily working up with laser some more. Nice. What uh, have you primarily been using material wise, like woods or acrylics? I don't actually know what in the world this printer is doing. I don't see anything heating up. No, I feel like this part is just not, I feel like we're not gonna have it on today's stream. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it after stream and let's just get this bed mounted because it's been the sort of bane of the stream so far. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Let's get the bed mounted. Uh, what acrylic stamp? Oh, nice. Uh, we have plenty of glass to work with, but waiting on the rotary. That's awesome. Uh, what do I do with all the printers? Uh, pretty much all of them are in the garage uh, or in here. Uh, I'm, I've given away, I gave away one to my buddy on Sunday. Uh, I tore down two this last week just for basically parts to use for other projects. So it just depends. A lot of them sit, but they get used for videos and stuff like so I can't a lot of them I can't just get rid of um, because I end up meeting them for just printer projects and such okay let's lift you up I just don't have very many connected at the same time I, I have some stamp material here, uh, here that I've been wanting to use the laser I just haven't gotten a chance yet I wonder if there was an issue loading the, is the cardboard uh, polymaker swollen? I didn't have a ring on it, so I wonder if that was the issue. But yeah, we'll worry about it later. Um, okay, so for the bed, we need M3 T-nuts. So let's grab those. Uh, have you done anything with the GD Tech or that ever is called that you did the live stream unboxing of? Yeah, I tore it down. <laughs> uh, because they were defective. So like the early versions had issues um, with the frame basically. Um, it wasn't, it just wasn't built right. There was issues with the heat sort of making things expand. So your first layer offset was never correct. So yeah, I, uh, I tore it down. Um, I, have all the parts pretty much. So I'm hoping to use them for other builds. Like there was two meanwhile power supplies inside of it that I got out of it and a bunch of other stuff. But um, 
the it's kind of funny that you brought up the chitty tech because i'm supposed to be getting the new one today uh it looks like it's stuck in utah so i think it's coming tomorrow but they uh they finally uh corrected made all the corrections in manufacturing and have released their new version of it so yeah the new one should be coming they sent me i asked for a change log and uh they sent me the change log as far as what they've made uh different from what they made different from the first one or the first version of this one and it's quite a lot yeah they, well um i know that nero has the chitty but he has the chitty smart and the one i had was the max or the big one um but yeah they, they made quite a few changes to it i can send it if you want it, i can send it to you turtle the change log um but one of them was that the frame is now steel reinforced or like there's metal reinforced. Of course this is done now. So we could technically print out that piece on here really quick. Now I'm over it. We're, we're gonna do it later. Um, the first one was promising on paper. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing, but just they corrected the issues that it had. I think, they, I think the first one had carbon fiber X rods and they got rid of that as well. We can, let's take a quick look at it. Uh, update on your head. Oh, where did you go? Yeah, so this is, um, this is what, oops, this is what they sent me. There we go. Um, let's go to the very top really quick. So this is the change that they made. So the frame is all metal now. Um, I guess before, I think it was the bearings down here that were just sort of in the plastic. And so that was causing, um, it was causing your Z to never be correct. So. New all metal frame, ultra steel reinforced the metal cross beams at the bottom. So I think that's the big thing is the cross beams at the bottom uh, that weren't there before. We redesigned the entire structural frame, adopted an all metal frame and strengthened the bottom structure by adding the extra beam to ensure the machine is, a the machine is able to resist thermal deformation and keep stable work. So they did that. Um, they got rid of the carbon rods and went with a hardened steel like hollow uh, setup. So uh, improved surface straightness and a 60% lower air deflection highly durable and no need for frequent maintenance. So, um, which I'm not against. I mean, I haven't had any issues with the carbon rods on the on the X1 or the P1P, but um, I'll, I mean, these are tried and true. So um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, reduce the motion. So 10 millimeter thick rods, or wait, no, no. 10 millimeter belts they went with. Um, I thought they had 10 millimeter belts before. Maybe they were not 10 millimeter. Uh, updated cooling, so new cooling system. The cooling system at the hot end has been redesigned and upgraded to effectively reduce clogging phenomenon, phenomena caused by thermal soft. So basically heat creep correction. Uh, two sets of hot ends they had before. I don't think that's different. No warping, that's not different. Uh, this is different. Um, so it says now clipper adaptive meshing and purging. That one definitely wasn't natively in there for the first one, so that's cool. Um, because their beds are not like mix six beds, I think that having, having adaptive meshing is going to be really nice to be able to have a mesh, uh, but not take a ton of time doing the entire bed. So that's a cool update. I mean, it's not hardware, but that they've, you know, packed it into the uh, clipper version. And I think that's it. New slicer. That's it. Yeah. The big one's the frame. So yeah. That was an interesting one. I knew we were squirreling on that one, but um, I think that was an interesting one. So, okay, so we need 25 millimeters from the whole of the front T-nuts, I believe, to, um, to the back. So let's see. Right, isn't that what it's saying? 25 mil, yeah, so. Let's get this 25. I'm just using a metric ruler. It's should be fairly easy to eyeball this 25. 
Scoot you back. Okay, that looks right. Uh, they just hacked it a bit. It's still Clipper 0.10. Gotcha. Chat, this is your fault. You voted for Nevermore now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Chat did vote for Nevermore now. And it's just that stupid clip. And I printed it out because, again, the STL has it all together. I just don't know what happened to it. <laughs> Not super happy about that. But at least it shouldn't be hard for me to swap out the bed later. Um, I like to remove it and put the Nevermore in place. But yeah, definitely a little annoying. M4 Thumb Nuts. We use the thumb nuts as spacers. You can replace them with different heat resistant spacers of the same length. M4 thumb nuts. Where are our thumb nuts? Okay. Let me turn this that way everyone can see a little bit better. <laughs> it was my fault for leaving it up to a vote. Again, it wouldn't have been an issue had I had the pieces, but go figure. I'm missing one. Okay, so these are just going to be sitting on top, I think. Um, oh, interesting. So these quite literally float. Don't, um, okay, so these are just going to be sitting on top of here. Is that right? Um, seems like it's right I also think that I need to I need to um, connect our wires for this no no bed nice <laughs> you missed you missed a lot <laughs> okay so let's see what do we have here so we got live going in where's our um, We also need to connect our ground. Here we go. Okay. So let's do this really quick here. After stream, switch to Nevermore to black as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, Gates? Okay. So we're going to flip this around like this. We're going to take our ground wire, we're going to attach it. Going to attach it to the screw in the back. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I want it to go. I feel like I want it to go like this. I see a light. I think this needs to go. I'm gonna head out for work, have a good stream, don't chase squirrels too much. No, we're gonna get this going. We're gonna get this powered up soon. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, Aaron. Have fun with the laser, man. Okay. So we got a ground wire in. Now we need to connect the last three wires. which are thermistor, maybe, there we go, okay, thermistor, and then we've got neutral, blue, let's go in neutral. So there's our little WAGO connectors. So push our, push that in there. And then live is going into brown. Let's double check that it's bed. Yep, bed live. Okay, so our bed's officially connected, um, which is great. <laughs> 
we'll leave this hanging out the front. This is our Nevermore. No, this needs to go like this. Um, currently in the south of France and Virgin, and they don't tell me, nobody knows. They only use this space here. Okay, so let's see. M3, so we got that. We got our thumb nuts in place. So we need M316 socket heads. M316, Okay, so we're gonna have to move some things. Um, the oh god, yeah, I see why we added the bed last. That adds a lot of weight. So uh, the nozzle probe is too far forward, so we definitely need to move that back. Um, let me see here. So let's loosen our two bolts on that. There we go. Slide that back. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna come around this side. Let me see here if I can get this right. Okay. I think we just go for it and get the front ones in. Let me see how far back our, oh. Let's slide these back further. Okay, yeah, let's get the front ones in and then I'll worry about the back ones. Uh, what time is the drawing time to uh, try and stay awake? Uh, the drawing will be, let's open it up really quick. Uh, it's in 30 minutes, but let's open the giveaway. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see. Okay, Polymaker giveaway is officially open. And pinned in chat. You don't have to be here for it, uh, Deanna. If it's, I know there's a lot of people here from not in the States. And so if you enter in and you get drawn, uh, I also need an email. Oh, I get what, it's quite literally, so I thought, now I get what you're saying. It's literally a spacer. <laughs> These are not, are these long enough to squeeze? These don't seem long enough. Are they not right? It says M316 socket heads. And the build calls for M316 socket heads. Huh. Weird. Yeah, I, I, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think we have the depth that we need. So I think M320s would probably be better. Let me see if we've got some M320 socket heads. Uh, I think perhaps Aldeo needs longer screws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These definitely aren't gonna work. Um, M320, yeah, let's do these.
All right, let's see if these will do. Yep, okay, so that was much better. Let's see if we can lock that in. Maybe slight issue. No, never mind. We're good. Okay, the two front ones are in. Uh, let's get the back ones in. So yeah, if you're building the LDO kit, uh, if the M316s don't work, you need M320s. Should be a note in build notes. Oh, really? Should be a note in the build notes. Uh, page 50, which is 58 through 9. Why am I not seeing it? Uh, doo, doo, doo. Build notes, wiring guide. Oh, <laughs> uh, of course there is. If Domar was here, he would be scolding me. <laughs> okay, um, so let's do... He probably would have reminded me more than scolded me. All right, so it does call it out. Come on. Uh, the proper way to build an LEO kit is follow the manual and be annoyed when something doesn't work. Try to fix it and then remembering this build. Yeah, I am. Um, I would love for there. One second here. Can I get this out? There we go. Um, I would love for instead of having to reference two guides, there to be like a modified version of the Voron guide that you follow that calls out the LDO different things. I mean, I don't expect, um, I don't expect, oh, come on. I don't expect Voron to do that, but I think it would be much nicer on LDO's side than having to reference two guides. Like it just, I don't know. There's already a lot to think about, but like with following the exact standard guide. So again, to have to remember to check the, the second guide from LEO stuff, it just it adds another layer of... Okay. So, what next? It says, uh, bend spacer thickness, depending on the kind of spacer thickness, you may need to use longer bolts. Don't tighten, only tighten one bolt fully, leave the remaining bolts loose, this will offer thermal expansion. Oh, wow. Don't fully tighten, leave the remaining bolts loose. So just a singular bolt. Interesting, okay. So let's... Tighten these down and then loosen them. Really? So a little bit of a little bit of play then. So we'll tighten up. Bless you. <laughs> Good Aaron sneezing. Okay, so we'll tighten up this one. <laughs> okay. So this is in. Let's slap, let's take off the plastic sheet and the smooth PEI. Slap this on. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Bed is on. Um, are you installing a purge bucket? I am planning on installing a purge bucket. Just print off the LDO build notes. It's also not a bad idea. And then follow the Voron guide and that's what you need. Yeah, I think having a physical copy of one to just reference would be easier than 
the way I'm doing it. Other can simply add a page in with updates on the build guide to make sure it's easier for everyone. Yeah, I do think, I mean, again, I think that they do a lot of really well, uh, but I, I think that again, there's probably a, a way to make it where it's harder to accidentally skip something. Uh, what is the giveaway of what's here then? Um, so it's spool of polymaker filament anywhere in the world. Uh, you don't have to be here. You'll get a email the winner with a form uh, tonight and you just fill that out. Okay. I think we're good to just uh, flash the micro SD card and power things on. Um, let's go to the LDO notes uh let's see this is i want rib c wiring guide so i pretty much did double triple check all of this stuff prior uh now that you have completed the hardware wiring to move on the software the following section outlines resources raspberry pi os down the raspberry pi imager the easiest way to do this is use their official imager down the raspberry pi imager under advanced enable ssh operating system so let's do this let's get the um Let's get, let's get, uh, let's get it flashed and install Clipper. So, uh, there are a lot of kits that, so you cannot reference all kits. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Okay. So I've got memory card right here. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm pretty sure I've already got Clipper installed um at least on um I'm pretty sure i've got clipper installed on that on the micro sd card on the pi that's in there but we'll do we'll do a clean install we'll do it all from scratch just following the guide because it's been a while uh i won this and yours wow that's that super lucky okay so it comes with a sandisk 32 gig micro sd card we will cut this out without damaging it. Nope, we will not. We need something sharp. Uh, there we go. Okay, do we have an adapter? We have a flash drive, we have, we do have an adapter here. Okay. So, let's go desktop. I think I have Raspberry Pi Imager. Pi, yeah. Uh, I know, right? Hey, what's up, Joker? You taking off nice? Uh, I need to go have a nice stream. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Next week, it's going to be just a chill... Um, next week's just going to be a chill stream. We're just going to hang out and print before we start any other build stuff, so... Okay, so let's run the imager. And we'll, we'll follow it exactly step by step. Normally I install like mainsail OS, but we'll do uh, exactly as it says here. Uh, where are you? Okay, uh, advanced options, enable SSH. So isn't it control, control X? Wait, why don't I see advanced options? They changed this. Is there no longer? Let's see if we try this first. Uh, operating system, uh, Raspberry Pi OS. Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me move it off and so it doesn't show my credentials. But yeah, basically it pops up here and you can set, enable SSH, um, set a password for it. 
And then uh, you can see my network, but like you can set the Wi-Fi credentials already. So let me do it really quick off screen. Um, let's do... Configure wireless LAN, yes. Uh, that should be fine. And then I'm pretty sure, so also under here, under wireless LAN country, I'm pretty sure I didn't set this one time and it, it you'll have issues. So make sure you set your country. I wonder if you, nope, I passed it, US. Cool, save. And right, yes. Okay, so it's writing now. Uh, do other specific purpose. What what would you have installed then? You're saying uh, mainstay OS or something like that? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Chat on white screen. Yeah, I usually do that. I'm just following the instructions on here at this time. But yeah, normally I would install Mainsail OS, which has a bunch of stuff installed. But we'll just do this. So we'll SSH in and install Kaya and we'll install everything through, everything through Kaya. Uh, yes, we're definitely gonna use Kaya. That's the game plan. I don't think the screen should be an issue if we go through um, if we go through Kaya. Kaya will install Clipper screen. Uh, LDU has their own config. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, let's move this off to the side for a sec here and see what it says. So, uh, yada yada, save, remove it, enter to the Pi, remotely access your Pi. So power on the Pi. Um, please putty. I don't. I don't. I haven't used the built-in shell. Uh, follow the instructions. So install Kaya, use Kaya to install Clipper, Moonraker, Fluid. Yeah, so we'll just do everything with there. If you follow the previous step, the Clipper screen should be successfully installed. Read this guide for further information. Next, you need to install Clipper firmware. Cool. Yeah, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, where's the LDO? You said they have their own config. Uh, Clipper configuration. If you followed our wiring guide, you can use our pre configuration, download the configuration file, and upload it. Okay, so we'll start with their config as well then. Uh, there's been permission issues that Kaya bugs out on. Interesting. Well, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't happen to us. We've already uh, we've already gone through the gambit with the um, Nevermore. So, Yeah, so we'll try, the goal still is powered on um, and run through the first checks, like all the checks, see everything's working, moving, and if we can, start a cube at some point. <laughs> That's the game plan, but will we get there? I don't know. For anyone that has just joined or just joined recently, we're doing a giveaway for a spool of polymaker filament and we're gonna be doing the drawing in 16 minutes. So uh, the form's linked in chat and if you don't have a Discord, just put NA or don't have or, um, it's really just there as a placeholder. Most of the time I reach out via email. All right, we're almost gonna power it on. I'm excited and also a little bit nervous. Alrighty, so hopefully we can, do we have to take the bed off when I live? I don't want to damage anything. Let's tilt it. Yeah, let's go side cam. Let's tilt this. I was late, what happened with the Nevermore? Uh, we were missing, <laughs> oh God. So the Nevermore, um, we were missing a clip 
uh, one of the clips, we couldn't find it. We tried to print it and <laughs> it was a pain to slice. And then the uh, X1 carbon in the garage is not wanting to print it. So uh, we're doing the Nevermore later. So I'm not gonna fully flip this because I just don't want to. Um, I'm gonna reach underneath here, pull out the current micro SD card. Pop in our new one. It is tight. Okay. Ooh. Uh, hey, what's up, Dimitris? Uh, can you please give away someone in Colorado who knows the th how to about 3D printer pair? My K1 needs belt tightening for the XY. The first printer are not sure what they should feel like, but what I did is. I would reach out, I would reach out to uh, Kregality as a starting point. I know someone on YouTube has made videos on a lot of the, um, on a lot of the sort of like basic um, 3D printer care slash stuff for the K1. I would look if you haven't on YouTube. I just saw, okay, so we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna hope for the best. So, um, Why are we not <laughs> Oh man. One of those days. Why is plug not going in? Hold on. Let me see if there's not an issue with the power plug because it is not going in, which should not be an issue. Also pick up all these screws. It looks fine to me. Any tricks on how to reduce stepper driver noise? Um, you can tune, I just saw, um, Clipper has like a, I just, I just saw someone post about it, but Clipper has like a, a tuning guide. Why is this so tough to get in? There we go. Okay, yeah, Clipper has a tuning guide that you can tune the driver and it's supposed to optimize the driver and your motor, like if you go through it and it can help with, I think, heat and noise is what I saw. Okay, we're gonna, uh, yeah, stealth chop you can do as well, but stealth chop sucks if you're trying to print fast. It, it, it is a mess. I, I will never use stealth chop on any sort of like performance printer. It was, it caused so many issues on my first V0 build when I was trying to figure out how to get it to work quite, uh, well, so. Okay, we're gonna, um, we're going to power this on and hopefully no smoke rises out. I don't think we'll see anything on the screen since there's no clipper screen on it yet. Um, but let's just see how this goes. Fingers crossed, everybody. <laughs> fingers, fingers and toes crossed. Three, two, one. Okay, screen's got color. It's upside down, which I knew when I mounted it, so we're gonna have to figure out that. I don't see any smoke uh, generating SSH keys, so at least we can see that it's booting. That's a good thing. Rebooting in five seconds. Yeah, yeah, I have to set up clicky. Hey, Delmar, <laughs> welcome. Um, Cool, so the Pi is booting up, which is good. Uh, oh yeah, I've thought, I've been through all the videos on the K1 and the Crowdy official one, so here's hoping I more or less got it right. Why was the reason you were playing around with the, um, uh, what was the reason you were playing around with the belt in the first place? They just were loose from factory? Um. I get, I set self chop on the Z motor because that was one noisy, even idle. Uh, yes, so I think, I don't know if Eggy's still here, but he was having some noises from his Z as well. And I, the same thing happened on my first V0 as well, where um, the Z motor was just really loud. So I did, I did enable self chop on Z. So yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, screen's upside down. Um, I think that's the way that this is supposed to be mounted. So I think I did that correctly because I, I looked at it last night and the way the LDO standoffs is, there's no way, um, there's no way to flip 
uh, this physically, so it has to be done on the software side or something like that. So we'll look into it. <laughs> Just flip the printer over. Uh, where's the clipper tuning guide for drivers? Let me see if I can, I think I took a screenshot of where I saw it on my phone. Give me one second. Uh, where was it? A bunch of photos of Jack. I don't see it. Let me see. I'm sure I can find it if you ping me later on. Clipper, driver. I don't know if it was a plugin or tuning. So I can find it. TMC drivers, clear documentation. No, it was a separate, it was a separate plugin type thing. Um, if you want to ping me later on, remind me and I'll, I'll take a look and see if I can find it. Uh, there's a message on the screen. Configure your line for rental manager. Okay, let's see if we see it on the network. Oh, really? You've been trying to flip it? Yeah, I don't think there's any other options with this. Because if you look at the LDO guide, the ribbon cable comes out this side. So this orientation is correct based off their docs. So there must be there must be intentional. Um, okay, let's see if I see it really quick here. I think this is going to be it. Uh, let's see. We're going with putty. Uh, winning. Oops. One, one, nine. SSH. Uh, sick. Okay. Uh, there's a software spell to flip the screen. Okay. Our big four months. Yeah, four months old now. Okay, so let's quickly go over to Kaya GitHub. We'll probably have to install Git. Uh, remove. Uh, doesn't it usually have you install Git before? Maybe it's already, I don't know, maybe that's a part of it. Let's try it. Okay. Um, Okay, so it does have Git installed. Hey, what's up, KB3D? Password123. <laughs> it's Master Hacker, <laughs> Master Hacker 420XX. Sorry, I missed the beginning. Happy Wednesday. You did not miss much, Alan. We, uh, <laughs> oh boy. It was, uh, I thought, I was like in my head, today is going to be super smooth. I did all the electrical already. Like, we'll be good. Um, but I, I was, I had a vote on whether we should install the Nevermore first or not, which wasn't an issue. But we voted to install it first. But then I realized that one of the little, like, spring clips that hold the fans in place, uh, I lost it between the time I printed it and today. And so there was an issue trying to slice it. And then the, I sent it off to the X1 carbon and the X1 carbon's being funny. Uh, so it just wasn't in the stars. So it's been, we spent quite a while just doing a whole lot of nothing. Uh, let me run the script. So yeah, <laughs> you didn't miss a whole lot. Okay. So we have nothing installed, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we trust you receive the usual lecture from local system. It usually boils down to, okay.
All right, so let's install all the things. So we need Clipper. Invalid, oops. Why is it doing it twice? What the hell? That's weird. Okay, there we go. That was odd. Number of Clipper instances, one, yes. Uh, do I need to be in chat to win the giveaway? No, you don't. Nope, nope. Uh, yeah, have you tried using the pseudo whatever your screen is 90 degrees minus pseudo for you show? Yeah, no, you don't You don't have to be in chat. Um, okay, I'll, I'll email whoever ends up winning tonight. If you haven't joined, four more minutes and then we're going to do the Polymaker giveaway. So game plan is run through all this, flash the board, and then go through the initial checks. Uh, how many printers do I run off one Raspberry Pi? I typically just run a printer off of a Raspberry Pi. If I was gonna run more, I wouldn't have them mounted in the printer like this. I would probably rather have it as its own separate hub, um, like its own kind of off unit to the side. And I'd have some sort of like USB hub adapter to it, but no, I, I don't. Um, typically speaking, a lot of the printers that I'm building aren't using Raspberry Pis. They're using an alternative like a CB1. Um, that's probably the most common that I use. But because the CB1 doesn't work with, is it DSI? Whatever the, um, the connector type is for the uh, screen on this, that's why I'm using Raspberry Pi. Uh, yes, uh, it's not a wave share. It's a it's a um, big tree tech 2.0. Is it a 4.3 inch? It's it's a big tree tech uh, screen. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm happy that nothing smoked. That is always that is always positive. I was pretty confident. Like I, again, I because I did the wiring off stream, I had time to like take my time and triple check things and not get distracted. So. I felt pretty confident about it, but you never know. Does the current version of the CB1 work with all screens now? It does not. It does not. You have to use HDMI or um, there's one other type of of connect. I can't think of the is it CS DSI? I don't I don't remember which one it is. But no, it doesn't. It, it definitely doesn't work with all types of screens. They built. Uh, I can actually look. CB1 screen. Yeah, SPI. So they created an SPI screen specifically for the CB1 uh, that I need to order at least one or two of these. But yeah, it doesn't work with, if you go under uh, Big Tree Tech CB1. Is it S SPI it doesn't work under? It'll tell you, it's like right at the top here somewhere. Um, yeah, so CB1 doesn't work with DSI or CSI. SPI is much slower than the alternative, gotcha. Yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. Um, that's probably the biggest bummer of the CB1 is the screen compatibility. But I guess if you go over HDMI, it's fine. It just depends, like it's a little bit, you know, bulkier. Um, so you just have to sort of account for that. Uh, the WaveShare 4.3 will not work. Tested yesterday and had to order the Big Tree Tech screen. Interesting. Uh, so Jealousis will cost a fortune here in South Africa. Do you have local, is there a local Voron vendor in South Africa? HDMI is getting more popular anyway. Yeah, I know um, Steve, uh, he's used it a fair bit and he sent me some like right angle HDMI They're, like HDMI right angles but then they go to ribbon cable so Sony Clipper packages failed interesting so maybe we do need to run I see Uh, 
Let me get car prepper now. What is, I can't even remember right now. What is the update command? Is it sudo, let me see. Update. Wow, I can't type. Uh, update I OS. Sudo apt uh, get upgrade. Is it upgrade or update? Nope, it's not. Oh, I spelled it. Sorry, this keyboard is not easy to type on. Um, get update. Okay, I'm screwing up. Uh, where is it? Instructions are for Raspberry Pi, obtain a clipper config. First update, then upgrade. Pseudo APT update. All right. I haven't done this in a bit. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> LDO manual. I didn't, why didn't I see it? Uh, no, it would be under so much happening here. Where did you see it in the manual here? Download Raspberry Pi under advanced operating system remotely access. When you need to play tools for Mac OS. In your Raspberry Pi, you'll need to install Raspberry Pi OS clip on interface. Popular interface. I don't see it in the manual. Uh, then sudo apt upgrade. Okay. Let's do, while we're waiting, let's do the giveaway. Um, let me see. Let me end the giveaway. Um, let me unpin it really quick here. Make sure I'm in the Rev C guide. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. I'll double check. <laughs> Thanks, Tomar. Uh, unpin message, remove. Okay. So I need to download, download the, um, somebody got in last second. Let me, hold on. Let me, let me download it one more time. Cause I get everybody. All right. Extract all, extract all, drive. Okay, it is uploading. Give me one second here. Grab all the names. Okay, I've got everybody's name. Let me see really quick here what's going on. I think it takes a while to do the update. Oh no, it's done. Um, okay, so now we're doing sudo, oops, sudo apt upgrade is what we said. Yeah, cool. And then sudo reboot, right? We should reboot it. Uh, uh, Jaws bit only way to get 80% of the polymaker range in the answer because of the distributor here. Oh, really? Um, oh, Kaya get page, okay. All right, let's let this run, unless it's done. Uh, forget it, we're gonna do this. <laughs> let's just do this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, for anyone, uh, one more time, for anyone that hasn't done one of these uh, giveaways before, um, I will, whoever wins, I will send an email to you later today, and it's just essentially a form. If you're in the United States or Canada, you'll end up getting a gift card for the Polymaker store, and you can choose basically what you want. And if it's like an exotic filament, you can just use the gift card as a discount and then um, pay the difference. If you're outside of US or Canada, then you could choose specifically the spool. So like any PLA, ABS, ASA, or PTG, except for exotics, and then Polymaker will ship it out. Um, if you 
I've not tried out Polymaker Filament uh, and you want to, they make amazing filament. There's a link in the description and it also helps out the channel. So it's always appreciated. So uh, let's see, today Jackson is four months old. So I think we'll do four, uh, four shuffles. One, two, three, and four. Alrighty, good luck everybody. And in three, two, one, here we go. Looks like Oscar, Oscar Steen. I think that's the first time winner. Congratulations. Uh, let's do a little confetti because we got that working and we'll do a little tap. Oscar, congratulations. So I will, um, I'll send you an email later today. If you haven't gotten an email by tomorrow, feel free to ping me, but I'm, I have a rule now where I won't schedule next week's stream until I'm done or until I've contacted the winner. So the order of operations, I don't forget. So you'll, you'll get an email tonight. But yeah, congratulations and uh, thank you everybody for, thank you everybody for playing. And thank you to Polymaker, of course. So let's see, um, let's see where we're at. I feel like we've got to be getting close. All right, last thing we're gonna do is a pseudo reboot. We'll let this reboot really quick and then we'll hop back into Kaya and continue where we left off. I guess I haven't had to set this up in a little bit because the last build we did, probably the Mercury 1.1 is the last time I've played around with this. And I can't remember, we did the CB1, so it was a little bit different uh, the way that I did this. And then the last build we did, which was the Boron Zero, it already had the image flash, so I didn't have to do it. So it's been a little bit. Uh, oh, unpin, yeah. So I deleted it, but didn't unpin it, gotcha. Unpin message. All right, so let's try this one more time. Let's go under putty. And what was the IP? Clients. There we are. So it was 119. Okay, so Kaya is right here. Let's just copy this. Paste you, right click. That's not right. What happened there? There we go. Okay, try this again. So we're gonna hit one to install password again. And install firmware, Python three pull to the recommended one. I, something is going on with the one key on here. If I hit it once, it is automatically weird. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, I just installed Clipper on two pies this weekend. I can do it with my eyes closed now. <laughs> yeah, well, normally th this is just a different route than I normally do it. Um, usually when I've installed Clipper, I would say that probably 75% of the time I just go straight to Mainsail OS. And Mainsail OS already has um, most of it installed. So you get like Mainsail, Clipper, uh, Moonraker, and I don't know, Clipper screen you might still have to install but yeah, I haven't gone, I haven't installed Raspberry Pi OS Lite maybe ever. I mean, maybe one time, but it's been a really long time. Um, let's see, I'm st uh, not using a premium harness. I'm still yet to one, one of those. So far I've had to buy all my Polymaker rolls. It's a tragedy. Um, if you could, when you do it, Discord would be better. Wait, what would be better? It's automatically putting a one, that's why. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. I was like, my keyboard suddenly isn't working. Yeah, if we can get through all the checks today, then between today and next week, I'm going to get the Nevermore installed and probably play around with like the purge bucket and brush. And next week's just gonna be a, next week's just gonna be a hangout low key stream. Um, I should know by next week a little bit more talking with Steve when the VZs are coming in. Uh, and based off that, we'll likely start the Trident 
and then we're, we're going to be double streaming. So like Wednesdays will be streaming on this channel and then Sundays will be streaming on Steve's channel. And then I might, I might end up doing another stream just sort of sporadically through that. And that's when we'll build the Trident just because there's so much stuff going on at the same time. Is it because you're more important than helping me? Why? <laughs> I wish I could buy a Galaxy ABS here, but no luck. It'll it'll happen, Jose. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Because it's only been out. I mean, they've talked about Galaxy ABS or ASA forever. And it took a lot longer, um, you know, for them to produce it and get it in the States. So I imagine it's not if, it's just when. Yeah, Cyborg sent over their Trident. Uh, Trident. <laughs> Trident. So it's a purple frame uh, with a dragon high flow, and we're doing uh, we're doing we're doing tap with the trident, and I think that's pretty much the main the main things. It's a no, it's not. It's a cyborg. It's a 300 millimeter. It's only new to Canada recently. Hopefully, it comes to your side. So, yeah, so Canada got it recently, which is sweet. Um, This should be the longest of the two. I think the clipper screen and Moonraker and everything else will be a lot quicker. Uh, we're, so we're using their, it, they, they come with uh, printed parts. So we're using that because I think that for a lot of people, like I know for a fact over the two years I've been you know messing around with Voron stuff that a, printing ABS is a pain point for a lot of people that are getting into Vorons as their first Voron. They just haven't done it much. And so yeah, there's print it forward, um, but the kit includes ABS parts. And I know um, the ones I've used for the V0 have been fine and uh, Nice, who's not here right now, but he built a 2.4 and he said that the ABS parts have been great. So I'm gonna use the parts that it comes with just so that way I can see, are they any good, are they not good? And have that as part of my uh, video review. I don't know that the color scheme, of, it's sort of blue and black with a purple frame. Um, I don't know if that's the color scheme I would have chosen, but it, it's, it, it's fine. <laughs> Yes, I might do the Mantis tool head. Um, not initially, but I might uh, afterwards. It looks awesome. It looks really, really awesome. You know what I haven't, oops, I haven't looked at our likes today. We're at nine, ooh, 92 likes, that's pretty good. If you haven't hit the like button, please do. I, I don't think I've mentioned it once today. So to be at 92 is awesome, but if we can cross over 100, that'd be rad. Um. Okay, so let's go back to our instructions. 93, I love bonds, but I need to see how some people can struggle with the number of printed parts. But I do see, yeah, um, especially the bigger parts. Like uh, on when I, even on the V0, so my first Voron was a V0 and I hadn't printed ABS in a really long time. And I ended up using a BQ B1 in a uh, Wham Bam um, hot box enclosure. But even then, it, it took some time on some of the parts. It really did. So um, on some of the bigger parts, especially, I guess they're more so the um, more so the skirts than the main components. But even like the the uh, initially when I was trying to print off a stealth burner faceplate on a V0, I had some issues. I, I had to use the like lily pads or mouse ears um, to give me a little bit of extra bite. Uh, I think I, I probably could have gotten away with it if I just heat soaked the V0, but because the bed wasn't edge to edge on the one I self-sourced, it just, the edges were not as warm and that was enough to be a little bit problematic. Hey, we got a hundred. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll do uh, we'll do some air horn for that. <laughs> Man, I feel like this normally goes so quick, but when you're watching it install, it's like watching paint dry. Uh, the functional parts aren't hard to print, I think. Yeah, I don't think they're so bad either. Um, I mean, not now, especially. And I mean, honestly, the um, the P1P and the X1 Carbon print ABS so well that it feels like cheating. Um, but yeah, for someone again, like if you're, let's just say you're getting into 3D printing, you've got your Ender 3, and all of a sudden you're um, wanting to get into Voron finally, and all you've got your Ender 3, well, you know, it's just a lot to learn. Like, it's a lot. <laughs> it's ABS is a lot less forgiving when it comes to like, the environment you're printing in, your first layer adhesion, your settings and stuff like that, your cooling. So, um, is this a this is a Pi three? Yeah. Uh, check live stream on Discord. Okay. Discord. 
first chain. Ooh, nice. Uh, Aaron's not here anymore, but I just saw his engraved acrylic. Uh, this is the support. Oh, I also see uh, Decay, your picture. Thank you. Um, oh, sick. Uh, a better start macro. I assume guys start you code and LDO configuration does not come with bed mesh setup. Rad. Okay, I'm gonna open this stuff up. Touch screen setup for Clipper. Thank you, Delmar. Secondary print tuning. Visit site. All right, cool. So I've got these pulled up as well. So that will be very handy in just a moment here. Okay, so uh, add user modbot. Sure, yes. Okay, so we've got Clipper. Let's do next Moonraker. Yes. Let me quickly see on your touch screen setup here. So we did, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine regarding your touch screen. Clipper screen is one of the popular, you will use Clipper screen for all the setup instructions on its documentation site. No additional configuration needed inside the Clipper's config. Uh, you will need to find a new, this file is used to make changes to Clipper screen settings. Okay, so we will need that. Uh, rotating your screen, sick. Remove the SD card, insert it into your computer. So we need to do this. So yeah, we'll do this. Let's get it installed and then we will, oops, sorry. Sleep. Okay, so Moonraker's installed. Uh, the LDO screen config is kind of hidden in the weeds on the RevC wiring guide. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, I did look through the wiring guide pretty heavily on my own. I mean, not this bottom portion. I haven't looked at it before today with you guys, but the actual wiring to make sure that I wasn't doing anything wrong. So I felt pretty confident in that, but there's a lot. Um, there's a lot to look through, so. Pi 4s are much faster for installing. Gotcha, that makes sense. I think I only have a single Pi 4. Um, I don't actually know where it is. Probably in a different printer. I think I only have one Pi 4 ever. Most of what I've got is Pi 3s. I can edit this stuff over SA Search. I don't know why they make you pull the card. Have you seen the leak about the uh, P1S, X1S, X1E? Yeah, I have. I saw uh, Nathan Builds Robots uh, saw that they filed like some something with their patent stuff, but it had the names of three other devices. I will say, um, well, one, I haven't signed any NDAs with Bamboo, but two, they have not told me anything about any of these machines. So I have no idea. Um, other than that, I don't know much about what's going on behind the scenes uh, with new machines. It's exciting. I just, I don't know. I, like, I don't have any info. I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that it's probably for simplicity for people. Like, cause I, I'm not nearly as good at using command line. So for me, it's easier to pull the card. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, if you know how to navigate everything, um, just doing it over SSH is probably easier. Okay, I'm getting this installed. Then we'll do clipper screen. No, I, I really don't. I really don't know anything to know. If I if I was under NDA, I would just say like, hey, I signed an NDA. Like, I'm not able to talk on anything until it's public facing. Like, I wouldn't mind saying that. But no, I, I quite literally haven't signed any NDAs, and I also uh, have not been told anything about new printers from them. Okay, clipper screen. I wasn't, I, I don't know again, like what the machines are, but if they are coming out with a machine that's even cheaper than the P1P, I, I would be like, I, I would be pretty surprised. Um, I just didn't feel like, and again, not saying they are, cause I don't know, but I just didn't feel like they were gonna target any lower price point than that. I just don't see how they could really have much margin going lower than that. So the only incentive I could see for offering a lower printer like lower price point printer would be to get people into sort of the bamboo ecosystem and also just sort of like put the nail in the coffin for some of the other manufacturers out there. So I just don't, again, with the components they're using, I just don't see how they have these big margins and they just cut prices on like, 
the P1P by $100, which is nuts. I didn't, I didn't see that coming either. Like they, they had reached out to me asking if um, I was interested in doing like some sort of a congratulations for their one year thing. And I said, sure, yeah, because they, they reached out to me early on uh, when the X1 was coming out and were, they've been great. Like they've been really great towards me and my communication with them. Uh, but even in that communication, they didn't tell me like, hey, we're doing a one year sale thing. I had no idea until everybody else figured it out. So uh, they're probably upgraded versions and probably a bigger one. Yeah, I know there's a lot of demand for a bigger one. And I think that if they come out with a bigger one soon, that would hurt, um, that would hurt the people that were buying uh, Prusa XLs that were only planning on using it as a big core XY. For the multi-material people, I don't think it really matters very much, like the tool changing aspect, but I um, I uh, think for the people buying single extrusion ones, I, I think it's it would pull people away from it. And I imagine that they would probably go, so it's $2,000, I think, for the single extrusion variant of the XL. I imagine that they would do it for less than that, Bamboo. Uh, X1E is rumored to be extended. Ah, interesting. I could see that. I just wonder if that means extended in height or like extended. Cause I don't, I'm not crazy about tall printers. I, I mean, I, I know that some, like everyone has their own use cases for 3D printing and some probably need the height, but generally speaking, I find width and depth to be much more valuable real estate than height for most people. I, I could potentially see them doing a bed slinger. Like maybe they'll use what they've got on here and do something like a, um, I feel like they can make a really dope cantilever printer. And I'm not even really a big fan of cantilevers, but like with the same sort of carbon rods and light tool head and like a rigid side, I could see that for being really cheap, but I, I don't know. I just don't see again what the gain would be unless they're just wanting to get more people into the bamboo ecosystem to hopefully upgrade them to the bigger siblings later on. I'm sure we'll know soon though. I'm sure we'll know soon. I really think that. Oh, come on. Uh, I was, he was leaning on them to answer, but got no comments. Yeah, I think that um, Bamboo's pretty hush-hush about a lot of what they're working on. Although, didn't the P1P leak? Yeah, P1P leaked. Somebody found the web page, like just, I think they were browsing around the website and were able to scrape the URL and it was, it was a public link that was, um, it was with a public link. Uh, extended, I'm thinking certified or a different E. Hmm. I don't know what kind of certification. I mean, rumors are X1S and P1S are smaller build areas, mini like and X1E to be a competitor to the K1 Max and Prusa XL. I don't know that I was expecting a new machine. I guess it's been, a, it's been seven, it's been eight months roughly since the P1P launched, but technically, technically, I, I mean, the P1P is a different machine, yes, but it's so heavily the X1 stripped down that I don't, like it wasn't, I don't anticipate it was very hard for them to remove things from the X1, uh, excuse me, and create the P1P. So I guess they have had quite a bit of time to work on some sort of alternative. I'm hoping this is the final part of the install. Uh, DJ releases on a 12 month cycle, so the culture probably comes with their guys from yeah, I guess it's just a lot quicker. I mean, not that other manufacturers aren't even releasing quicker. Like, 
<laughs> if we're using crowd i mean crowdy releases a ton of printers but any cubic and elegoo release at least at least one to two times a year i would say um and what are the other big manufacturers um uh, fl sun doesn't release very often um Sobel releases so far pretty damn often. I would say at least two to three times a year, it seems like. So yeah, I guess a lot of them do release fairly often. I, I think once every 12 months is plenty of a release. I, I mean, you can't keep up with the latest stuff anyway, but like releasing multiple times a year to me kind of sucks, especially if it's an upgrade each time to, to buy something and six months later be like oh it's no longer like the latest I don't know like to me at least once every 12 months feels a little bit more reasonable all right I think we're almost done with with uh Why do people use putty to connect to remote devices? Maybe I'm missing something. Do I have these windows? I always just SSH and did all I needed. Uh, well, it wasn't a thing when I initially started using Windows. Like, I think I was on Windows 7, and it didn't have the ability to uh, um, SSH. You had to use putty. And now I just like putty. I don't really know. Like, on Mac, I just use Terminal. I'm primarily a Mac person. So for this, I just, it's what I know, and it works fine. That's really my only reasoning. Some people will uh, buy just because it's new. That's true. I just hope if there if there are innovations in the new printers that there is a way to upgrade the existing X1C and P1P. From a business point of view, it makes sense. I don't know that these printers are designed to upgrade. I mean, I guess the P1 people, like you're just so closed off, but even getting to, you know, like getting to the parts is, is, uh, is tough. We'll see. The company where I work uses putty because uh, Windows has that annoying certificate saving thing that you have to manually delete if a cert changes. Yeah, old habit. It just, it just works. Oh, we're done. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, back. So what do we got? We got Clipper installed, Moonraker installed, Mainsail installed, Clipper screen installed. Wait, let's see if we've got 192.168.160.119. Sweet. Okay, so let's shut down our Pi. Is Clipper screen showing on here? No, no, we need to reboot. Um, so let's shut this down and I'm gonna do what the instructions say. So we're gonna pull the Pi's, we're gonna pull the Pi's memory card and we're going to rotate the screen and then plug it back in and then try to flash the board and then go through the checks. 5 30 a.m here time for a coffee wow where uh what state or what country <laughs> are you in phil hey liz welcome okay so powering off switch on the back then we are going to quickly tilt this backwards actually let's remove the power cable so i don't crunch it as well as my phone Uh, memory card is right here. Maybe, can I get it? Hold on, I'm gonna tilt it the other way. Oh. Kind of sucks to get this out. Um, <laughs> I don't. It would have been easier. It would have been easier to. Yeah, I don't think it's as bad if you're building a 350, but the motor kind of blocks your finger's ability to get underneath and get the memory card out. There we go. And we dropped it. Okay. It's easy to. It's easy to install, but to get it out, it kind of sucks. Okay, what did I do with the adapter? Mm -mm -mm.
found it. As panel clips are dropping, I realize this is probably the exact thing that happened with our Nevermore spring. <laughs> hey, Andrew, thank you very much for the five dollars uh, for the post uh, post for the post stream frosty beverage fund. I can't even use words today. Thank you very much. Aaron did go grocery shopping yesterday and got some like hard ciders and uh, the surfboard white claws. So I will I will definitely have one tonight as I think about the Nevermore. Oh, come on. Uh, for everyone here that is in the States that celebrated 4th, what did, what did you all do for the 4th of July? Okay, so flash drive. Why is the micro SD card not showing up here? Huh. Okay. Let's try that again. Come on. Uh, yeah, this is a 300. Build a micron. <laughs> Maybe at some point. Come on, micro SD card. What are you doing? What are you doing? We just need to change one file on here. I'll give it a sec and see if it pops up. Sometimes, I don't know why, it takes a while. Uh, let me also see if we have a different adapter. I do, let me try a different adapter. Could be this, some of these, uh, the little micro SD card adapters that come with a printer, some are awful. Uh, back now in the kitchen. Uh, what color are those prints again? The, the printed parts on this? Dude, what is? This adapter sucks too. What's going on? There we go. Um, the black. There we go. Okay, micro SD card is not popping up. Fun. All right, we'll give it a minute and see what happens. Uh, so the red. Where did it go? The black is just Sunlu ABS. I'm almost positive is what was used, and the red is 3D Print Life. Um, let me see. Oh, it popped up. Yay! Yeah, sometimes it just takes a while, I've noticed with this. Um, let's go to our 8-bit stuff. Yeah, so the... Um, this is the, AB, the uh, red Enviro. It's like Voron official. I think they sort of collab with Voron for some of the printed forward stuff, but it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice red. What's the touchscreen you're using? It's a um, Big Tree Tech. I don't know the exact model, but it's a Big Tree Tech touchscreen. Okay, so instructions. Uh, this is what was sent to me. So man uh, manually edit boot config.txt. Uh, config.txt. Notepad plus plus. No. Okay, uh, it's found in the command. Disable it by adding a hash. So DT overlay V3D. I'm gonna quickly move this off the side so I can reference it while we're doing this. Let's see. Okay, so it is under Pi4. CM4 Pi4. Okay, I don't, I don't see the thing I'm looking for. Oh no, I'm in the wrong spot. Okay, so um, if DT overlay VC4, DT overlay VC4, yes. So disable this. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, usually I find red looks pretty nice printed. My favorite red to date is a Sparta Sparkle Cherry Red. Yeah, I, red used to be my favorite color like 10 to 15 years ago and I sort of like grew out of it being my favorite color, I don't. I, I really like like. I mean, honestly, the the orange and green Modbot contrast is one of my favorite sort of color contrast or like color palette. Um, but like the Voron classic colors are black and red, and so I wanted to do. I, I even though we just did that with the Cyborg printer, but that was kind of what I was going for. 
Okay, so first thing we do is it says comment out this line. So DT overlay VC4 KMS is done. The last step is to copy and paste the following content to the end of the file. So let's copy this and oh it says un no yeah literally at the end of the file so down here control p control v so display lcd rotate equals two dt overlay rpi touch screen if not touch screen inverted y after you're done save and close the file okay so this should be it control s to save i think when just like a red mostly comes from everyone and their mom doing things in black red color scheme that's fair I guess it is a fairly common color combo. All right, hopefully this did the trick. So if this goes well, or if this worked, we should see Clipper screen boot up and we should see Clipper screen boot up in the right direction. That's the key here. Okay, tilt you, don't slide off my desk, please. Huh? Hi. Ooh, I don't know if I can do the sugar, but I'll do the, Everything but the sodium. Oh no! No. It's all right, the micro SD card just went the wrong way. I just, I just take one cheese and one ball. Or one of each then. Thank you. Thanks, wish me luck. Great. The micro SD card definitely went in the wrong slot. Uh, if this screen does not work, there is another uh, change in the same file. Okay. Come on, dude. I think the micro SD card is caught underneath the... Uh, I'm going to flip it, like fully flip it for a sec here. So I'm pretty sure the micro SD card just went underneath the... Um, It's under the DIN rail, or the DIN, DIN mount, so I think I need to take it off completely, which sucks. It's been one of, the, it's been one of those days today. That's all I'm gonna say. No, it's not a loose screw that, um... Such a bummer. It's the little, these little cable, or these little deck panel things don't stay in very well. They're okay if, if the uh, printer's upright, but on the side, they kind of pop out. So I'm gonna reinstall them, but later. So yeah, I think I need to fully disconnect, so. Un unplug this. I was hoping if I just wiggle this thing, I'd pop out, but it is not happening. Loose screw on the table? Oh. Um, I don't think it was a loose screw. I think it was just a screw that was on the deck. Okay, so now I'm wondering if the printer just straight up ate the micro SD card. <laughs> Oh my God, just get a new one. <laughs> what the hell? It doesn't even make sense. Where could it have gone? It was like this. It slid right underneath where it was supposed to be. So it should have dropped directly down here. I don't know. The chances of that happening. Nobody saw an SD card fall out when I tilted this thing, did they? I don't, just don't see how many directions it could have gone. I'm at a loss. I, I am completely at a loss. I don't know what happened to it. 
I heard it. I heard it. I just, I heard, <laughs> I heard it hit the, oh my gosh. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but it's back. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm almost getting to the point where I'm like, is this build, is this build haunted? I'm hoping I didn't damage the screen. I think I caught it before. Okay, everybody, we're, we're back on track. Let me, uh, let me plug this back in. Absolutely unreal. Pi is going like this. Pi is back on the rail. We need to plug back in our ethernet cable. Followed by our USB cable. And lastly, our ribbon cable. But let me check the, um, I'm gonna really quickly reference the uh, LDO guide because I don't want to plug it in the wrong way and damage something. Let's see. Where's the guide that you sent me, Delmar? Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, so the last thing we're doing here is just making sure. Okay, so backside of it should be facing inwards. So it's going to go like this. The, the build was really smooth up until I think today. Like everything has gone relatively smooth up until today. Okay. What? What a wild, what a wild moment. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully we plug this in and we see Clipper screen. <laughs> and I don't, gosh, all right. Fingers crossed, everyone. Whew. Here we go. All right, three, two, and one. Would it normally show that or would it go straight to Clipper screen? I don't remember. screen it was the right direction yes the bed is mounted it's right it's right side yeah yeah and we have clipper screen yes <laughs> did you you missed it Aaron uh, so I was we had just done all the installation I had done a tweak on the micro SD card to rotate the screen I went to plug the micro SD card in missed the slot and lost the micro SD card. I, I could not find it. I tilted the printer a couple times, removed the Raspberry Pi, and then on my final tilt, it magically fell out from wherever it was. Um, you came the Pi, change the, oh, check, check touch. Touch screen's working. Clipper is attempting to start, yeah. Oop, oop. Oh, I guess we can't go back, right? There is no back from there. But yeah, I mean, if I go, we try menu system. Yeah, it's working. Oh, that's so exciting. It is exactly why I use SSH to say. <laughs> that is a very good reason to never take the micro SD card out. All right, so we have that. So next up, we need to flash the, um, we need to flash the board. So <laughs> that feels like a win though. I'm, I'm, I'm still happy. Like that is a step in the right direction and we need to take take those little wins. So, um, next up, setting up the touchscreen. Next, you need to install Clipper firmware on your Oculus Flame board. Okay, so we need to go. So we'll go back to Kaya and build it there. Mm 
password. Do we still have the, uh, no, I would have changed that. Kai Kai, uh... Okay, so we are going to go under advanced and we're gonna go under build only. I'm pretty sure, I don't think you can flash. Hold on, let's verify. I'm pretty sure with all Big Tech boards, there's no direct flash. Um, on dock site. Uh, Octopus Pro. I don't think that the firmware update, both Octopus Pro is the same, sick, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go under here. We're gonna go under, wait, I'm sure it's built. Yeah, yeah, so we need to go get the clipper bin file. Okay. Uh, wait, what did I just, no, build is what we want. Uh, are you going to do Earth? Sorry if it's been asked much times. Oh, sorry, I just seen that. Uh, no, I'm not. Um, I, I decided this year that I wasn't gonna be traveling. Um, well, that's not entirely true. Um, Lightburn's putting on an event and I'm working it. So I will be there, but um, yeah, just because it's Jack's first year, I want to be here as much as I can, even though I know it's just like a weekend. So this year I'm not going to, um, I didn't go to Merck or Rocky Mountain or Earth, but next year I will absolutely be at at least one of them, if not two of them. So um, yeah, next year I absolutely will be, but this year I'm not. Um, okay, so we're just gonna copy this. So enable the level. STM32 is what we are wanting, which is right here. Yeah, 32. Uh, STM32 F446. 32 kip. Uh, clock reference 12. Communication PA11, PA12. That's good. Okay, that well, looks good. Once in sleep, uh, press Q. Yeah, I, I was um, I was bummed out, believe me. <laughs> uh, Fabrica sent me a photo of him hanging out with a zombie in the, I think I think it was in the lobby where we hung out last time. And uh, like, man, I, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I think I'm happy with the call that I've made uh, because, you know, Jack's just growing so quick, uh, but I definitely missed everybody. I had so much fun last year. Um, it, it was just awesome seeing everyone after I hadn't been to an event in years since, you know, like everyone, I guess, since the lockdown, I hadn't really been to any of the events. So it was, it was cool, but I, I will. Um, oh yeah, the new ModBot merch came in. Might wear that tonight if I remember. What are you, what are you working on tonight, zombie? You, you brought your kiddo this time, right, Andrew? I think um, in the photo I saw you, you were there with, I think it was your son. Um, pretty sure. Because I, I remember the last Smurf, I think it was just you at the table, right? I think I have win SCP. So then we'll, um, we'll FTP. Uh, yeah, Minimi came with. Yeah, that's awesome. Was that was that his uh, first first fest like rep rap fest or no? Uh, to be honest, not much. Just rebuilt my studio. Oh, sick. What time are you going live? I'll try to swing by later. Uh, I'm just gonna be doing some video editing later on tonight. So I'll try to swing by for a bit. Okay, so we're good on this. Now we can go under WinSCP. So we need to grab that bin file. Um, I don't wanna upgrade. I don't wanna connect there. Okay. So, new session, can I create, how do I, I don't use this very now. Uh, new site, that seems right. FTP, port 22, 192.168.160.119, oh, username, on bot, password, save I guess. I don't know, we don't need to save. I don't know why I'm saving. Okay, so now we're going Clipper, Clipper out. Wait, yeah, not out, there we go. And then we are going clipper.bin and we'll just drag this to 
Oh, I guess this is our desktop. Boop. Awesome. Um, around 10 Eastern. Okay, so you're Eastern, which is so 8 o'clock my time. Okay. Uh, why not just flash via Kaya? You can't, um, yeah, you can't flash. Uh, I don't think any of the Big Tree Tech boards do. I've always had to do this route. Uh, Twitch, I'll stream on YouTube when I start the Fabrique. Okay, should be on Twitch, good to know. Uh, I like to say she wanted time with her dad, mostly she wanted, oh, daughter, I said son, sorry. Uh, I like to say well, she wanted to meet Ellie and get chocolate. Hey, that's, that's fair. <laughs> we all have our reasons. <laughs> Okay, so I don't think the octopus came with a micro SD card. So um, let me see. I think I might have just a tiny micro SD card on my desk somewhere. Uh, eight gigabyte seam. There we go. I have a 512. Hopefully this is not defective. <laughs> the amount of micro SD cards I've purchased uh, is pretty high. And the amount that I still have is pretty low because I lose them or they just they don't seem to last. And I don't know why. Um, I feel like I buy semi, you know, like decent micro SD cards. Okay, so uh, you need to format the disk. That's fine. I don't care. Can't format. Beautiful. Well, let's see if it pops up. We'll give it a minute because again, it seems like it takes a bit. I think we need to rename it to firmware dot bin, right? Um, firmware installation. There we go. So let's delete all of this. Yeah, firmware. So we have to rename it to firmware.bin so that way it, it's recognized. So let's go here. Let's go to our desktop. Let's drag Clipper to our flash drive. I mean, not flash, you know, micro SD card. Uh, and then we need to rename this to firmware.bin. Looks good. Eject. Okay, let's quickly power off our printer as well. Okay, so we should be good to go now. So we're gonna load this in, hopefully flash it, get the ID, plug the ID in, and hopefully connect to our printer. Um, get a SATA drive and USB adapter and dump SD cards forever. Wait, get a SATA drive and a USB adapter and dump SD cards forever. I need, show me the setup, I need that. <laughs> I found, oh yeah, sometimes um, sometimes I just like lift up something. I'm like, oh, there they are. But no, I quite literally bought a, um, I purchased at least a 10 to 15 pack off of Amazon. And I was like, yeah, this will last me forever. <laughs> and I can't find any of them. Okay, let's flip the power switch off. It should be shut down. Um, okay, cool. So at least this one, the micro SD slot is on top and easy to reach, which is nice. This 300's kind of tight down here, I will say. Like, um, there's a lot of space in the LDO wiring guide, and that's definitely because it's a 350. Okay, so let's power this on, and if all goes well, we should be able to SSH and grab our serial ID. <clears throat> uh, use an SSD instead of microSD card slots. A lot more reliable. Oh, you're saying you use an SSD for the Raspberry Pi? It seems pricey. Well, I say that, and then I have, this is a, an SSD that's been sitting here for like a year. Just, it's it's pretty low. What's the size on this thing? A 210 gigabyte, this would be perfect. <laughs> it's just sitting here collecting dust. Are they really SATA 2.0? Wow, okay, I'll have to look into it. No way, okay. I guess, I mean, technology, right? Like it all, um, it all gets so much cheaper so quickly. I remember when SSDs were, like to get a one terabyte SSD was brutally expensive. Okay, so if all goes well now, I should be able to go into our, bam. What's happening? I must have entered my password wrong. Or it's still booting? I don't know which. Okay, we'll give it a minute. We'll have a cheese stick. Access denied. Okay, so I must have done something wrong. There we 
There we go. Back in my, I know, I sound like an old person. Tune for the Geek Western Digital is $16? Wow, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll end up doing that then. Okay, so clipper install. Um, pretty sure at this point all we need to do is this. Sweet! Okay. Hold on. <laughs> mm. So we got what we need, so that's great. That means that it flashed correctly and we can see the ID for it. And I think someone said that we should be using the config that LDO provides, which is going to be, here we go. So we've got that. You should see text like this. This is the MC map. Open your printed web, Raspberry Pi, pre-made printer.cfg. Okay, so let's do start off with this. So we're gonna copy this file. We're gonna go over to main cell. We're going to create a new file. Oh, we already have a printer.cfg. So all we're gonna do is should we be replacing this? I don't know if this will have the main cell stuff. Yeah, we'll forget it, we'll replace it. And then, let's see. Things to change. MCU path for Mr. Type, Z and stop limit switch location, pro point, pro pins, find paint me sky security pin. Okay, so let's start off with, where's our MCU section? So let's see if we can at least connect. Is it all the way at the bottom? Did I, did I miss it completely? I didn't see anywhere that said MCU. There is no place that says MCU. What what gives? Uh, make sure to pick the Rev C. Sorry, damn cat. Wait, was that not? Was that not Rev C? I thought it was. Uh, yeah, Rev C. It's weird though. They don't have they don't have the. Um, should I undo, undo my copy paste? Maybe keep this. Yeah, so I guess we'll keep this at top. Um, and now we will grab from Putty uh, the last part of this. And we will paste it into here, like so. And we will restart. Line 35, oh, so now I'm gonna get an error probably, right? Since there's two of them. Oh, derp. <laughs> okay, so we don't need, we don't need this. So let's instead copy you. Don't need two MCU locations. And we will go here. There we go. Okay. Double MCU'd. Position max and section stepper Z must be specified. Okay, so I think before we do anything, we should probably just go through the checks now, right? That probably makes sense. Or should we get should we get this stuff set up? <clears throat> okay, so we've done MCU paths. The Mr. Type should be fine. Min and max gantry corner positions. Don't insert the squirrel. Uh, number out the on air line at the top until your stops are all set because you would crash the toy. Wait. Do, oh. Uh, the only config has all the notes on what you need to check. Yeah, I think we're good on that. Z end stop switch location. Homing in position. Quad gantry level, pro position, stepper Z section. What was the error at three right now? Was it about Z? Hold on, uh, save and close. Okay, position max and section stepper Z. 
How do I know what the max currently is though? Stepper Z. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, so it's a 300 build, bam. There we go, position max, cool. I'm just gonna keep restarting it for a second here. Okay, so uncomment. Gotcha. So this is what we need to do. Oh, shit. So let's delete all of the things that are not relevant to us right now. We'll leave that. Okay, so we'll scroll through and just uncomment then. distance on tech from uh, use 50 10 for okay so we're good on that um mr type use generic MC. did we do it all oh here we go uh quad gantry level gantry for okay so let's get rid of this Let's get rid of this. So we need points. We need you. We need you. We need you. Oh, that's not right. Display should be fine. There is a lot to uncomment, but it's nice that it has all these options. This is. Okay. All right, let's restart it and see what happens now. Control, will uncomment. Oh, control forward slash will comment or uncomment align. Ooh. MCU shut down. Heater temperature exceeds this. Okay, so maybe the thermistor type is not correct or. Thank you, Aaron. I always forget the, uh, I always forget what the short, shortcut is to comment or uncomment. That is much nicer. Okay, so maybe Thermistor is not correct then. Uh, you don't have the chamber Thermistor plugged in. You will need to uncomment that. Oh, good point. That could be the error then, huh? Uh, where is it? XY stepper settings, Z stepper settings. Is there a temperature section? Extruder, Thermistor, extruder. Good heater, probe, fan control, LED control, additional sensors. There we go. Wait, can I do it for all this? Control forward. Nope, that's not right. Oh, dude, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> that is so much nicer. <laughs> That's, that's what we like to see. All right. Okay. So, uh, I should probably, so right now the um, nozzle probe is not even secured. Like it's loosely sliding because I had to move it when, when we installed the bed. So I'm going to try to find the Allen key. Uh, it's a 2.5, let me quickly do this. Um. Yeah, I just want to secure it because once I find its location and set it, I don't want it to move around on me. Yeah. Ooh. I'm assuming that feels about safe. As long as the tool I can get that far back, I don't... It can't. Wait, it's clicky. So the clicky, the clicky board is it's going to hit the nozzle probe, right? So it doesn't need to be quite so far forward. 
think that's right. Because the nozzle won't be able to hit it. There's no way. It's too far forward. Let's see, uh, does the, does that work on EU keyboards? I've tried, uh, when she go beacon, I'll hook you up with the ultra fast quad gantry leveling. Sweet. Mine is three millimeters from the bed. Oh, really? Your nozzle probe is, mine is probably 20 millimeters from the bed. Uh, part of the reason is that my ground wire is in the way of it. The pin of the nozzle probe should almost be touching the bed. Okay, well then I have an issue with the grounding wire. Oh, I was able to shift it. Okay, let me loosen it then and move it. <clears throat> yeah, so it needs to go way further forward then. So quite literally almost touching the bed is fine. <laughs> it's we are very close to very close to touching the bed i'll show it too so you can see it let's see Yep, you just don't actually touching or it can cause issues, but very close. Okay, yeah, it's, I mean, there's a gap, but not much of a gap. Let's see. Um, yeah, so there's a gap. And there's still enough space for the, I feel like the PEI is gonna occasionally smack it, but. You just have to locate the bed for Vorn Docks for 2.4. Okay. Sweet. All right, we'll leave it like that for, for now then. Okay, so starting with starting with this, uh, we don't need you. This is what we need, right? Yep. Okay, gantry racking and scoring. CV2, Nero's gantry racking. We don't need to do this right now uh all this work and when you go tap it'll be redundant <laughs> no do we need to um poor gantry scoring can cause a number of issues first issue issues you're rubbing you need the startup guide Initial startup. Okay. The section provides a list of help in. Magnify, upgrade, standby, verify temperature. We're gonna start by verifying temperature being properly reported, navigate. Okay, so we saw temps are good. Um, they're right, right next to each other. Verify heaters, uh, navigate off. So turn it on. Okay. So we'll verify heaters, turn these on. Streeter, let's just go like 180. And we'll try 60 C on the bed. All right. Bus steppers should be in here, right? Step, yeah, yeah, so buzz steppers is next. We'll do that next. <clears throat> Reminder to change your probe dock and undock speed to 400 millimeters a second. <laughs> what is it by default, zombie? I made stops for the sheet to keep it from hitting the nozzle probe. Oh, that's cool. 
I think there might be some of the user mods. Yeah, I, I definitely would like some kind of a uh, stop for the sheet. Uh, that was the first thing I noticed when I was putting on the PEI was, oh, I'm gonna pinch of issues. Okay, so this is fine. But it's also heating up, but it's a big bed, so. I guess we'll, we'll let it climb to 60. <laughs> it, it is very, very slow. I imagine this will get, this should get a fair bit better with the enclosure, right? Or is it just going to be slow in general? This is also part of the reason why I was like, yeah, I'm good with a 300 because a 350 is going to take even longer to heat up. Also your GP, um, plug it. Oh, you're saying it's slow the movement speed, not the heat up speed. Wait. Change the bed power to 80%? How, how do you do that? I don't actually know. Is it under... I don't think I've ever configured it. Is it under bed heater in here? Okay, then config. Um, I think it was further down. Bed, 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 extruder. Bed heater. Control, PID, max time. Oh, max power. Wait. Yeah. I also, I run all mine at one. 80% reduces risk of warping. Keep 60% because bed warp. Ooh, everybody's got different opinions. All right, we're gonna do a 0.8. It's a, it's a happy medium. So I guess it won't update until I restart it. But yeah, we'll do that. <clears throat> I run mine on 60% power. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll do we'll do 0.8. We won't go up to a full one. Um Okay, but that's clearly working. So let's move on. Let's pull this down. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay, I run 60% of my Rev C300, I run 60%. I'll play around with it. We'll see. Maybe I'll, I'll do a bit more digging. There's no need to reduce max power on these beds. I think these are super thick, super, super thick beds. So I'm sure that it's fine to push them at least a bit. Okay, verify each server was operating correctly on the following command and terminal. Server under both turn. Okay, so for the T.4, the motor will rotate clockwise first, then back counterclockwise. Counter okay. It was pre-done in the cyborg build config at 50%, so you must have missed it. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, I'm sure it's been set in quite a few. I just haven't, I've never played around with bed power before. Okay, so we're gonna do X. So X should be, it's saying clockwise. Um, clockwise first, then counterclockwise for X. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna move this to here. Get paste. That was right. It went right first. Uh, new video idea, lots of engagement. <laughs> What's up, Tunky? Extruder fan? Yeah, extruder fan is on. It's on right now. Okay, so that seems fine. X is good. Uh, for Y, it's going to go clockwise first, then back counterclockwise. Oh, I should be looking at <laughs> Hold on, let me look at the actual motor. One sec. It's been said by devs in the Warren Discord that reducing the bed power from max doesn't do anything other than slower heating. Is hot end over 50C? It's at 49C. It just stopped. So yeah, 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 it was up to, exactly. 
Okay, so now I know which I know which motor I'm looking at. Give me one last try here. Yeah, so we're good. The um, stepper X is doing what it's supposed to. So now let's check Y. Stepper Y, and it said clockwise too is what it should be doing. Yep, that was right. <laughs> build plates being six or eight millimeter now just won't don't won't warp. If they do, it was crap build plate. Yeah, I, I I can understand. Like, I mean, a lot of things in three D printing have changed because now we have these. Like, things are different. <laughs> so a lot of stuff that was correct isn't per se wrong, but it, it doesn't always apply to the current state of the way things are. Um, Okay, so for Z, the front left corner of the gantry moves up. Let's see. All right, it's so front left. Let's let's back out uh, so we can take this look. Oh. Okay, here we go. That looks right. Okay, that was front left. Next should be back left. All right, is it still doing its thing? No. Yep, back left is going up and down. Next it should be back right. Yep, back right's doing it. All right, and the final one is Z3. That should be front, front right. And it's happening, up, down. Sweet. Okay, uh, last is extruder. Direction will be tested later, so let's just make sure the extruder is moving. I can see the pin back here, so paste this, and then it's going to be Extruder. Okay, there's no stepper named extruder. <laughs> uh, what is the name of the stepper? Stepper, stepper, stepper. Stepper Z, 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 extruder. It's called extruder. Why is it? Oh, it's probably because I had stepper extruder. I just need extruder. That's what I'm sure that's what it was. Let's see. Yeah, that's definitely what it was. Okay, so stepper equals extruder yep it's moving hey what's up pringles awesome okay so that's good so what's next on our initial check so stepper motors have been done um stepper motors don't move at all no we don't worry about that and stop check okay so for this, we should be able to just do here. Go to machine. It should all be open. Wait, probe? Yeah, probe would be the exception, I guess. So, uh, should be Y. Yeah, Y is working. X. X is working. Z is working. And then probe. Um, I guess that's clicky, right? So. Yeah, Clicky's there, and now if I press on Clicky, yeah, Clicky's working. Sick! Freaking awesome. Okay. Okay, so end stops look good. Um, XY homing check. Ooh wee! All right. Here we go. It homed, <laughs> it homed, <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, let's check, uh, let's check Y now. It did it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for Z, that'll, we have to get that figured out. Um, motor configuration, so we should be good on that. So I guess also let me check to make sure, yeah, so we're at max position. I just want to make sure that the uh, origin was set correctly, but back right corner should be max and max, which is 300 and 300. I guess there could be some offset. It probably is going to be an offset, but for right now, we're going to leave that as defaults. Um, I think the next thing we need to set up is probably clicky. Um, bed locating, the print locating of the Z is much more adjustable than any other models of 400. Before the 00, zero point, the Z end stop location and Z are set. Physical location is the end stop and print bed need to be finalized. The end stop should be located to be in line with the nozzle when the tool head is at max Y position. What? The Z end stop should be located to be in line with the nozzle when the tool head is at max, oh, max Y position. Got you, okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So bed locating, okay. Home X and Y, and then traverse just X to locate the Z end stop position at the minimum maximum X. Then it will trigger the end stop. Lock down the Z position. So we need to go lower. I feel like we need clicky, right? Like clicky to me should be the next thing we need to do. So that way we can get Z down. Um, so let's go. Hold on a second here. Let's go clicky PCB. Fabrico, uh, there we go. Do the clicky setup first, uh, then you can level the gantry and get close to the bit. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so, clicky, beta test assembly, we don't need to do any of that. Clipper config, adjusting dock location to make sure the switch and uh, printer change variable dock location for 35. Adjusting auto Z trigger location. If you're using auto Z calibrate, the printer. Okay, so hey, what's up, Lost in Tech, dude? If you want a good laugh, you go back and watch the beginning of this stream. Things were <laughs> things were wild, man. <laughs> it's always the easiest things that are not uh, <laughs> are not. We're going for a world record here. No way. Uh, Nero did, how, Nero's long, his V0 build was like eight to 10 hours straight or something like that. Uh, nothing nothing that bad happened, Viking. Basically, so this kit comes with the Nevermore, the Nevermore mod, right? So the carbon filter. And I wanted to, I was, I was willing to install it before we did the bed because I now have to take the bed off. And so we voted to have we voted to see whether we should install it or not first, and the votes won to install it first. So we're going through the process of installing it, and one of the little clip pieces that you need to keep the 5015 in place is just missing. And since we've been building this printer uh, one month and three weeks now, I don't know, I've had to move things in and out a bunch of times, and I don't know what happened to that clip. So I figured, okay, well, we'll just print one. Everything, everything was difficult with trying to get this clip printed. First, the slicer was having a uh, an error I've never seen before, uh, which took a little bit. And then I finally figured that out and we went to send it off. I loaded filament ASA in the in the garage and went to send off a print. And then the printer, it was the X1 Carbon, which I use all the time. I just printed it ASA parts on it. It, it didn't print the part. So we, we basically spent a bunch of time trying to do a thing and got nowhere. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, anyways, uh, you had to do some jank. Yeah, it was, it was, is interesting. So the thing I'm curious about is if this config is designed to do clicky, is there anything clicky related in here or do I need to install all the macros already? I, I don't think there's anything clicky here. Um, so I think what we need to do is go to just the regular clicky GitHub because essentially it's the same, it's the same exact thing. And then uh, go to our macros. 
I guess we probably need to just download the entire, we'll download everything. Uh, let's see. What time is it where you're at? Um, in UK, what time is it in the UK? And you need to remove the safe home stuff, I believe. It's been a bit since I've had it. Okay, I'm gonna do live streams at some point, not set up for it at the moment. It's a lot of fun. Um, I started, I mean, I've been wanting to do them forever and I'd done some, but we started consistently doing live streams probably a year and a half ago, I think. Um, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a ton of fun. <laughs> it's also, it's also sometimes frustrating, but more a lot fun um, than anything else. So, okay, printers, Voron, 2.4. Oh, these are just the STLs. So these, this has nothing to do with the macros. Clipper macros. Okay, so let's upload all of this stuff. So I'll exit out of here. And... Clicky. Create. Let's dump everything in here. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. Okay, so maybe you can't just, let's do one at a time then. Okay, so we shouldn't be using all of these. Um, clicky specific, nope. Clicky variable, why are these why are these blank? I don't understand how Aldeo doesn't include clicky macros in their configs. Spicek does it, and it's just an option on their kits. Uh, it's 11.30 p.m. Okay, time is irrelevant. <laughs> uh, same as mine. Safe home moves into clicky config. Okay. I'm confused, though. Why are these blank? Something is definitely not right with... Let me see if I open these locally. I'm gonna delete the folder because it's easier. Try it again. I don't, I don't, I just don't, that's weird to me why. Clipper macros. They sure as hell aren't blank on here. Clicky was neat for about a month. I got tired of it. Oh, I know why they're blank. It's so when I when I download a zip file on Windows, it's very misleading that it lets you navigate the zip file. But the since the files aren't extracted, it does weird things. Well, on Mac, which is what I usually use, if you download a zip file and you click on it, it automatically uncompresses it. So I think that's all it is. I don't I don't like. Um, I tried inductive on the Switchwire and had such a bad experience that I pretty well, uh, pretty turned off from using inductive, at least on an enclosed printer. It was just really inconsistent. And then the second I switched over to Clicky, um, the printer, like the experience was so much better. Okay, so we should now have, yeah, here we go. All right, so macros. There should be one page where we can call on the macros. Here it is. Okay, so what do we want? We want uh, screws you tilt we don't need, quad gantry leveling we do want. Oops, we don't want to delete it. We want to enable it. Oh, that's right. It didn't. Oh, Aaron! Thank you for this. Uh, choose show and folder. Okay, so Z tilts we don't need. Yeah, two or three motors. Help adjust bed screws we don't need. Bed mash we do need um and then place to put other specific to your printer i would assume we're going to need that as well my auto z was different almost every print and it wasn't good 
your auto Z with clicky. Clicky was painful in the first revision, but once I matured, it was good enough. Tap ECB. RC8 has been the same. Okay, save and close. So we don't need Z tilt, we can delete. And we don't need tilt, uh, screws tilt. We don't have screws to do this. Okay. So now that we have that, we need to, let's see how good the instructions are on here. We basically just need to jog the tool head over and get the location, but uh, let's go under clicky probe. Auto, okay, auto Z with clicky. Interesting. I haven't much trouble with clicky on Quark Y. Going to sleep. Hey, have a good night, Dutch. Upgrading probe, regular clicky, clicky NG, printers that support it, clicky components, probe accuracy, print settings, general bill, sourcing. Where's the instructions? So I guess there is none. Just <laughs> We're just going to do this thing. So going from here, we will jog it forward until we get our dock. Dashboard. Okay, so we need to go. I'm pretty sure also, don't we need to go forward? Yeah, we definitely need to go forward. All right, let's start here. Okay, that looks about right to me. <clears throat> okay, so 63 for X and 298 for Y should be what we need here, uh, which is going to be 63, 298. No. Uh, is it under here? Is that where it's under? The... Oh, okay, so the 1,000 errors to give an error, gotcha. Move acceleration, uh, I don't know, it should be like a 5K. Z end stop, X and Z end stop, Y. If a separate Z end stop switch is in use, specify the coordinates of the switch here. So I, I will need to use this dock location for X. I don't even remember what we said. What did we say? 298 and ah, crap. I don't remember. Save and close. 298 and 63. Okay. Uh, Remember you have some Z adjustments you made for PCB clicky if you have issues. Oh, because the height's different, you mean? Remember line 32 and 33. Yeah, so for 32 and 33, that seems like it's related to the the switch that we have down here, but I have no idea what the height is on it yet. Set to zero to have the probe move to the center of the bed. So we should probably just disable this for right now while we're trying to figure out the coordinates for that, right? Is it, wasn't that kind of the point? Uh, variable safety, minimum Z for attaching and docking home functions. Do we want to raise this then a few? Well, let's see, hold on here. Let's go save. And this is what we want. No. 
The file that we need to add is here. Clicky slash clicky probe dot CFG. Can we copy file like it? No. Keyboard slash. So let's go. Okay, clicky dash probe dot CFG. Clicky dash probe dot CFG. Clicky. Clicky forward slash clicky dash probe dot CFG. Okay, so that should give us our macros. Uh, let's do a save and restart here. 25 there's fine, okay. Include file does not exist. What? Clicky.clickyprobe.cfg. What do you mean it doesn't exist? It's K-L-I-C-K-Y. Oh. <laughs> it's a good thing this isn't a spelling stream. <laughs> I see it. Uh, click probe, that's not right. You don't exist. We do have a clicky probe. Yeah, we'll definitely test. What? Homing override. Oh. So we need to disable. Usually it's on the very bottom here, right? Uh, macros. Save C home. So we need to disable this. Since we're using. So. Ooh, I love that. What? Bed mesh calculate not found in G-code's macro. Wait, existing command not found in G-code macro. Is that because it's down here and I need to remove it? Print start, print end. We don't need this anymore, do we? Because we're not, aren't we? We're replacing this. You can control app in the CFG file for easy navigation. Okay. Bed mesh calibrate not found in G. Okay, one second. Uh, let's see. Live streams, live streams, live streams, live streams. There we are. Let's see. Uh, determining motor current. Wait, what am I looking at? Q232, it overrides it. Okay. I don't see what I'm looking at in live streams. Oh, using the default audio has a proper motor current. I'm going to do so if you're using audio. Oh. Oh, also, audio config does not come with. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. That's right. Okay, so we are saying keep G32, which is down. Uncomment. Okay, so we're keeping G32, and you're saying it doesn't have it. Because your mesh can change the different bed chamber frame, it's generally recommended to generate a mesh before every print. All of the bed mesh configuration options and explanations can be found on the cover docs. Here is a sample config. You can copy and paste this in your browser, making sure to uncom make sure to uncomment the proper free bed size. Okay, then place bed mesh calibrate in your print start macro. Did that copy it? Yes, it did. Oh, nice. So this has, oh, sick. Thank you, Delmar. Get rid of you, get rid of you. And uncomment you. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. 
Well, let's see if this removes the error. Save and restart. Woohoo! Okay. So, we should have our macros. Attach probe. Alright, sick. So, let's start off by trying to home this again. Let's home X and Y. What happened? What? Oh. Wait, no axis home. What? What happened? We changed something. G28, no axis home. Moving to a safe Z distance. What did we screw up? I'm assuming that has to do with the... Oh, you guys can't see it. Um, let's see, why they put... Oh, hold on. So the error I'm getting is... Unable to parse as a literal. Unexpected EOF while parsing. So it has, it has to do with the safe... Moving to a safe Z distance. Is it because it doesn't know the current Z height that it's at? Shouldn't it just, I would imagine it would just raise. You only need a home Z though. Have you tried leveling your bed? I'm working on that zombie. <laughs> I'm working on it. Attach probe shouldn't work. Yeah, because it needs to. Must home X and Y. So I can't home X and Y. Did you uncomment safe home? I didn't think I did. No, I safe see home. Well, oh, I uncommented it. Yeah. Was I supposed to uncomment it? It's because of the Z safe distance in Quad. Because the reason we did this is because Safe Z Home is now in Clicky, right? Um, let me see. Oops, Clicky. Yeah, variable save Z, minimum Z, true, variable enable Z up, true, variable max, bed X, maximum bed size avoids, wait, maximum bed? That's not right. Thirty-two and thirty-three. So this is the reason why, but I can't. I don't know this value. So do I? Do I guess it for now? You put your end stop. Oh. Well, no, 32 and 33 is for the, the nozzle, like the, the nozzle end stop, right? The Z end stop, that's what it looks like. You're saying for max bed here, so 300 and 300. Maximum bed size avoids during for max, yeah, so that's, that's what we need there. I have clicky, but I use the Z probe and end stop to home Z. Gotcha. Home X and Y. I tried. I tried homing X and Y. It wouldn't let me uh, watch. It won't let me. Uh, it won't let me home X or Y. So if I home X, yeah, I get an error. It has something to do with the safe because it's not moving the safe since it doesn't know the safe Z distance and it wants to raise it a certain amount, but it's not raising it. I don't know why that's the case.
It worked previously when I had, let me see here. So if I go, check if end stops are triggered. No, only the probe. Wait, yeah, yeah, probe. One second. This probe says triggered. Now it says open. Yeah, that, that's it's right. Move it to the way to the center of the bed. <clears throat> oh, you can't. Oh shit. Here, here's console. Well, let's, let me, um, hold on a second here. So if I hit X, okay, so yeah, unable to parse. So this is the error it's getting, uh, console. So safe home. So this is the safe home that was working. So like, let's look really quickly here again, uh, for comparison's sake, the old safe home which was right here. And then let's go to Clicky Safe Home, uh, which is gonna be under Clicky Variables. So just for fun, I'm gonna paste this here. So speed 100, Z hop. Home XY position. I'm I'm fine with defining it on line 32 and 33. The uh, hey, what's up, printer prawn? The uh, the reason set guess values. Okay, so set guess values. Gotcha. Let's try that then. So if I had to guess, if this is 300, so it's going to be roughly. 300, let's just say max value, so 300 and Y, and two, 220, 300, Y. Okay, 300, 220. Uh, when Steve set up, okay, okay, yeah, let's try it then. Let's go side view and see if we can get it to home now. Okay, that was it. At least now we know that was what the issue was. Okay, now we'll go Y. You can press the end stop yourself to trigger it. There was a lot happening, Aaron. <laughs> there was a lot. Okay, so let's see. So if we go attach probe. Move out of range. Whoa, negative 937? Why is it trying, why? <laughs> All right, so I must have screwed up on my, let's see, I, that has to be a me thing. No, it's not. Wait, 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 no, no. Where's our dock? This should be at 298 and 63. No, that's, that's right. Negative 937. Why is, what is that value coming from? 298 is right for why. But, hey, what's up, David? <sighs> this is why tap is goat. Yeah, I don't understand. Check the principal documentation clipper. These are dummy values, doc location. Yeah, it should be 63. 
Where did you put the values? Uh, right here. Dock location. Should be X63, Y298. Uh, negative 128 for gantry slash frame rate. Yeah, yeah, so this looks right. Oh, this is the issue. <laughs> right? This is, I think this is the issue. Variable dock move. The final move to release the probe onto the dock. Attach move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has to be the issue. Yep. Yeah, I didn't see these earlier. Okay. So final move to release the probe on the dock. So this is when you want to get rid of it. So normally, I feel like we just do an X move of like, I don't know, 40... 40 mil, 30 mil. Oops, oh, come on. And then the final attach move, final move to attach the probe, it's a relative move. You're saying 40 is good, all right, we'll do 40 then. For attaching move, I feel like it normally just goes in and then out. So we would want a y, y direction, right? So to, I don't see why it would be an X move. I would think that an attach move would be, we've got it and now we want to go negative 40. For line 58, Set it to 30. Why would, but why would I want an X move for the attaching? That doesn't make sense to me. 59. Oh. Okay. Also, wouldn't I want a negative value? Because it's already at max. So it can't go further forward. It would be... Since it's mounted back left, I would think we would need a negative value. I think we try this. Uh, X for attach is 63. Let's try this. Yours was set to a positive value? Interesting. That doesn't make sense to me. Let's see. Move out of range. 63, 338. Okay, so yeah, you're right. You're right then, because it's trying to go the opposite direction, so it does need to be a positive value. Okay. Uh, clicky variables. No, my music died. Let me switch this up. You are close to as high as the gantry can go. Please manually lower it. Good point. <laughs> Hold on. Let me fix the music, then I'll lower the gantry. <laughs> Good call. Good call, alien. All right, connect. There we go. Okay, uh, where is the negative? So it should be a positive 40. Cool, save and restart. And let's bring the gantry down so we don't have a major whoopsie. Can you move the z-axis down or it'll crash? Yeah, yeah, I got it, <laughs> thank you. Um, live streams link, scroll down to the Clipper config. Okay, let's, I wanna, let's try this one last time and then I'll check that. It grabbed it. It grabbed it. That's it. It did it. Um, it did the thing. Let's check it out. Look at that. All right. See if we can dock it. Uh, dock probe. It, it docked it. 
I did it. <laughs> That's one more time attach. It attached again. It docked again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> All right. Um, do we try to home now? So the issue I have with homing um, <laughs> is I don't know what it's going to try to do when it comes to, oh, this took me two hours of tweaking to get it. <laughs> now crank that to 400 millimeters a second. I, I, I will. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love magnets. I'm such <laughs> dude, there's something about the clicky and the way it uses magnets. It, this is like bliss in the simplicity of it. Okay. You need to find your end stop position on the X and Y. I agree. Can we home Z? Like, is there a way? Is the clicky? Uh, is that clicky? PCB. Cl yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the repo. Do a fake stop with your fingers. Okay, so you're saying, try to home it, right? And then hit the stop. Okay, here we go. I've got my finger on the. Uh, switch here and my other finger on the emergency stop <laughs> so we're ready for worst case scenario okay that is not oh so it's trying to hit this first let's make sure this works okay so that does work now it's trying to find it again okay yeah, yeah yeah you could check on discord clipper channel i gave you my clicky config okay sweet i'll reference it i, I will reference it um a bit later on. I just, since I got it working. Wait, it doesn't look correct in the dock? What do you, what do you mean? Um, is the clicky fully seated? Yeah. Yeah, it's all the way back. Is it because it's the PCB or? Check it out. Um, it's all the way, like it doesn't, it can't go further. Like it's, Maybe the thing is, so this end piece is not from the official, like this is from the official clicky. This piece right here is from the PCB clicky. Yeah, 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 okay. So that's probably what it is. Okay, so right now we need to find the XY position for this guy down here. So I'm, I'm imagining what like, so let's try to home this again. I'm basically gonna wanna try to get it as close as possible and then what, just like e-stop it? Let's not smash my fingers. You guys can't see this. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't feel like this is the right way to do this. All right. Just click, just clicky the end stop. Click the end stop. Okay, so like I did. Okay, so I wasn't too far off with my guess. Um, we're a little bit behind it. Let me see if you guys can see this. Uh, all right. Yeah, so we're a little bit behind it. Um, so let me see. The farthest down I can go is. Uh, One second, I'm trying to. Okay, so that's as low as it's gonna let me get. Um, we're real close. Yeah, yeah, I can. Oh, you guys can't see what the hell I'm doing. Sorry. This <laughs> is just a big blur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is as low as I can get it because this is basically where I triggered it with my finger. So it thinks that that's the, you know, the home, it won't let me go negative in Z. Uh, but we are really, really close. I think I need to go um, slightly further back in Y. I mean, I think that's the ticket. That to me is gonna click it. So this is 210 and 298. Um, so 210 and 298 is where we need to be at. So let's quickly do this. Machine. Two, what did I say? Two, 210 
and 298 sounds right let me confirm that 210 and 298 210 yeah that looks great okay so I feel like at this point, we should be able to just home it and let it do its thing, right? Drive it manually into X and Y and note those numbers. I think we're, I think we're good. Like I, I I'm a little bit scared, uh, but I think we're good. I think we can just send it. And I mean, I've, tr I've, tr I've triggered it twice with my finger. So I know that like the switch itself is at least working, right? Uh, there we go. Oops. So if we are good, I my game plan right now is to just hit home and watch at home X, watch at home Y, have my finger on the emergency stop and go for it. Hover that E stop and YOLO. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. After this, disable the nozzle end stop and just use clicky. Okay, we're, we're just going for it. We're everybody just hold your breaths. <laughs> Here we go. So we are going to home. All right, emergency stop is in place. Uh... Oh, it looks good. It looks good. It looks good. Oh, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Oh yes, <laughs> it was nerve wracking. I've, I've never used a nozzle switch like that. <laughs> Sick, okay. So now what, now what do we do? Um, thank you, I mean, I, I feel like this is, a t this is a very much so a collaborative effort. So, okay, now that we've got this, um, what, do, do I just run a quad gantry level? Is that next the next move? Is that right? Quad, quad gantry? Print a boat, PID tune and push plastic. Well, I want to, I want to level the gantry. Hey, zombie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, $1.49 and banana. G32. Okay. G32 is what Delmar says. He hasn't led me astray so far. Here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to just do the emergency stop ready. I feel like that's the way I live my life now. Oh, that's low. Why is it there? Oh, it's doing a quad gantry? Yes, it's quad gantry leveling. I feel like I want my safe height a little bit higher though. That feels a little bit scary. Horizontal move increase, 12 to 15. How tight are your Z belts? Not very tight. Yeah, we need to, we need to tension belts and stuff too. I, I'm debating on just sending it for, um, I'm debating sending it for a print and then just messing with the belts later on. Yeah, I agree. I need, I need to add Z. Another 10. Yeah. Tolerance. Is that why it's probing so many times? Is this also, yeah, it has a Z switch. Okay, we're getting closer. Sort of. Front left is like spot on. 
What should the tolerances be on too? Yeah, yeah, it's failing tolerances. Tolerances are set to 0.0075, I think. We'll see what it shows this time. Okay, so now it's at 0 0.026 and it's trying to hit 0 0.0075. I don't know if that's an unrealistic uh, range that it's trying to hit. Point zero zero seven is about right. Okay. You think that's what it is on me? The belts? Well, yeah, I'm definitely the belts. Definitely need tension. I I I a hundred percent no. Oh, did it? Oh, sick. Okay. Well, it did do that. Okay. <laughs> like <laughs> okay um i'm so excited <laughs> so um what do we what what do we do we should pid i'm assuming we should probably pid next let's go back to our um let's go back to here define the zero zero point cn stop pin location the end stop location probe testing Probe accuracy. So PID tune is what we want to do. So let's drop this down. Uh, Z, where, where are we at? We're at, let's go. It's probably about right. I'll go up one, two. Do you use the, let's, uh, I don't. No, I, I don't use the uh, LS start and slicer macros. Okay, let's do let's do this um, heated bed target a hundred. That's gonna take forever. Should we do a hundred? <laughs> All right, let's let's go for it. Change your movement speed. Yeah, I do need to raise move. There's a lot of things that need to happen. <laughs> movement speed needs to be changed. The height needs to be changed. It's got clearance, but it's not very forgiving. If things were like, if the gantry ever got sort of tweaked, I don't like how much clearance I have. So I want to add another 10 millimeters of safe, uh, like travel <laughs> for the probe. Uh, so yeah, speeds probe. Um, we should probably run a bed mesh. I mean, it's flat, but I feel like we should still probably run a bed mesh and print a boat. And then I'm happy with like calling it. It's been four hours and 10 minutes. Uh, and so, <laughs> there's, there's so much to happen. Don't bother PID tuning to 100. We're already at 50. But yeah, I guess you're right, right? It doesn't actually... We're going to have to re-PID tune it once it's fully enclosed. Should I cancel the PID tune and just do 60 Celsius for now? Yeah, I kind of feel like 100 seems like overkill. Uh, I don't know how to cancel it other than a emergency stop, so we'll just we'll do that really quickly. Sorry, printer. Don't worry, start. We'll do it to 60. Yeah, 100 gonna take forever, and also I agree, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be printing ABS till it's fully enclosed, and then I'm gonna have to redo a PID tune at that point anyway. So we'll do 60. There you go. I just I just don't see the point, Phil. Uh, because again, the 100 C temperature is for ABS and it won't be, the PID won't be accurate once it's fully enclosed because it's such a change to the environment it's in. PID, yeah. Let's see if the lights are working actually. Uh... Oh, we don't have any of the, let's see, case lights. Huh, the lights don't seem to be working. Maybe the pin's not right. All 
I also realized too, none of the macros are in place for the, uh, so I have to check to make sure all of the LEDs are working. With a big thick bed, it makes a little difference. Get those Z-belts tight. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to tension them. There's a guide that shows how to tension them. Like, I think, I think it has you do it with an app, right? Uh, let's see. It's going to be under tuning guides, secondary printer tuning. Uh, CB2 belt tension, Z belts, V2. A, a good point. Yeah. So it's with the app. I'm going to, I'm going to wait and I'll tune them using the app after. I did install the LEDs. Yeah. Um, they should be wired too. So I'm not really sure. I, I have no idea why they wouldn't be working unless I No, I definitely plugged them in. They're both plugged in here. Hopefully it's just a pin that's not correct or something. I, I don't know. But yeah, I'll look into that too and then see if I can get the macros for the, um, uh, see if I can get the macros for the tool head LEDs as well. Cause that's not working. Yellow the tension for the first 50. <laughs> I came back. You still, I still did not see magic smokes. But <laughs> you need to turn them on software. Yeah, I did. Um, I did turn on, yeah, things went pretty good, Turtle. Um, honestly, the most difficult part of today's stream was the Nevermore. <laughs> the, the, the Nevermore, yeah, I, I don't even wanna. But other than that, um, things have been pretty smooth, I dare say. I think, right? Oh, the micro SD card was a little bit of a wild card too. The printer ate the micro SD card for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we got Clicky working. Uh, it was able to tram the gantry. We got the nozzle probe working. I mean, it's it's like, things are, are, are they in the right port on the board? I, I'll have to check that, Delmar. I, I mean, I, I think they are based off of the LDO wiring guide, but I'll have to double check um, that that's the case. And if not, I can either physically move it or just swap the pin out in the config. So excited. So excited. Um, let's get, it's gotta be a polymaker filament. Um, I printed, here it is, here it is. I printed some of this, this vertigo stuff. Um, let's see. Okay. I need to attach the, um, the Bowden tube and all that stuff as well. Um, well, I'll do that in a bit. Uh, let me for right now, just throw this spool holder together. Oh, no, the lights did work. It just, it didn't send the G-code command because of the fact that it was um, PID tuning. Yay, look at it. It looks great. I am, I am so jazzed. <laughs> I am so happy. Okay, so we've got this. We're gonna save the config, okay? Then we're gonna fire it back up. We're gonna just do like a 220. Uh, where's the PID tuning? PID gantry squaring, we don't wanna do. <clears throat> Tuning guides, sourcing guides, tuning guides, sourcing, maintenance, where? Sourcing, build, initial setup. Okay, one second here. Let me go back down. I think that's all that's left is that. I mean, there's obviously a lot of other little things, but it's the key thing. Uh, so let's do part cooling. We'll do part cooling fan at like, I mean, I normally run it at 100%. I'm gonna be printing PLA right now. So we're gonna do Part cooling fan at 100%. And then we're going to run a PID tune on the hot end. We'll do 215 roughly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was just a matter of, uh, again, because it was running the PID tune, it didn't send, it didn't really send the uh, LED command. The only downside is these LEDs are um, like the adhesive on the back is sort of not sticking that well. It probably doesn't matter, but it eventually might go to uh, rainbow on a stick. Um, just because I think that's a bit nicer of a setup. You need to install the Z-Rail stops. Is that a thing? Is there, is that a thing? I didn't see it. <laughs> 
Uh, are the LED macros showing on the dashboard? They are. Yep. You should have seen how happy my dog was on Sunday. She got to see goats and horses. Oh my gosh. Did you get a video or a photo? I started taking Delilah, well, not this last week, because it's been upper 90s, but I started taking her on daily walks with me and she's been loving it. I've been loving it too, but it's been fun. Um, we, we've kind of gone, when Aaron and I and Jackson walk, we typically have our normal routes and it's not very far because Jackson gets kind of fussy. And so when it's me and Delilah, we're just like two dogs on a mission. <laughs> and so we've gone uh, to like this mass, like go there's, there's this neighborhood across the street from us that we only see the backside of it. It's sort of the corner of the neighborhood. And I, Aaron was like, oh man, the roofs are so big. They're probably really big houses. And I didn't think they're even houses. I didn't understand it because they were so big. No, 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 they're houses. They're like mansions. So uh, Delilah and I found this like whole break in the fence where we went through and <laughs> it was it was wild, but it's been funny going on adventures with her. Uh, I didn't take any pictures, no worries. I never removed the backing on the lights. I always remove the backing on the lights because I just feel like they're, um, Without it, they're so, like, they slide really easily. I guess there's only so much space that it could have slid out by, but yeah, I, I definitely did. Okay, so save config. So let's just throw a tiny bit of PTFE. Um, I think I've got some PTFE laying around somewhere, just so that way we've got a little bit. Come on, where are you? Oh, here we go, there's some, like, scrap PTFE. So we're just gonna shove this into here. Okay, I guess that'll do. Just so that way we can print this. So I'm just gonna, this is gonna be real ugly. Real, real ugly. I'm sorry, PTFE, I would never normally do that, but. Okay, uh, so let's, let's heat the hot end up. Found a park recently, that's a, oh my God. That's incredible. I, I can't let, well, Delilah might be okay off the leash, but I, I don't. Um, let's do, one second here, sorry. So much happening. Uh, let's raise Zed. Can't raise Zed. Okay, so let's home first. I wanna make sure that it's extruding in the correct direction before I just full send a print. Is, yeah, yeah, the wiring cover is loose. Uh, it doesn't have the screw in it. I lost the screw. <laughs> I, I, I've got spares, but yeah, it is loose. It's not, um, I'm aware that it's loose. So the next question I have is, I assume I probably need to set a Z offset before I, um, before, okay, so let's, hold on. So many things happening. Let's extrude first. Uh, let's extrude 50. Okay, so it's extruding the wrong way. I'm glad we didn't full send because <laughs> it would have been an uneventful, like an invisible boat. So let's go printer.cfg. Let's scroll down to our extruder. Extruder, step pin, direction pin. So let's remove that exclamation point so it inverts the logic let's save and restart and let's try that one more time z offset before the squash truck is it isn't um my concern is if i don't do a z offset before that it might dig into the bed is that not going to happen because of the nozzle probe like I, i'm just trying to this is a different setup than i've ever ran so i i don't know I just would love to not instantly destroy the PEI, if at all possible. <laughs> the the printer gods have taken so many sacrifices. <laughs> just, I'd like to, for them to not take another one today. No, you still need an offset. Eventually a full sign uh, has to has to just work with the printer. <laughs> uh, you still need an Okay, so set, do the offset cover screens faster and easier. Okay, so we've got this. Let's, let's try now one more time to extrude 50. Yep, extrude. Beautiful. Filament's coming out a little too quick. That's okay. Okay, so we have that. Yeah, set the Z offset. So should I just set it to something ridiculously high or should we try to, um, I feel like there should be instructions here. Um, let's 
There's gotta be instructions here somewhere. It's probably in the primary, right? Like I would imagine bed leveling, C tilt, quad gantry, bed mass, Z offset. If you did not run PID, say your extreme 245 MC and initial preparation. It's the offset. Yeah. Run G28 and then another G28. Okay, so let's do G28. Wait, G28 is gonna run quad gantry leveling again, isn't it? That's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll let it do this one more time. Uh, and then we'll we'll run the uh, command. And then we're gonna print a boat. Wait, what's happening? Oh, that was G28? Move to the center of the bed if not already. Okay, so let's do that. So let's just go 150 by 150. Okay. And then uh, clear any stored bed meshes, which we shouldn't have. And then run Z end stop calibrate. Z end stop calibrate. G22 includes quad gantry level at home. Uh, the clip between rocks is easy and painless. Wait, you're saying that like it has a built-in, like there's a built-in config set up for it? I thought you were just saying like set it. All right, let's check this out. Okay, uh, move, or, or more, Z, cali Z calibrate. Start. Uh, what? Oh, end stop, probe. Wait, what are we doing? End stop? I don't, I don't fully under, I don't know. Your G32 had another full G28 in it. Yeah, I didn't do it, did it? Where is the Z offset process that we're talking about? Z calibrate. It's gotta be under Z calibrate. Probe offset, zero. Okay, so this is, this is it? This is calibrating it? Is that what we're saying here? So then I should, I should probably move this to the center of the bed, right? Move. X. Okay. Probe not end stop. There's no end stop offset and probe offset. You need to set and only set the end stop. Okay, so we're saying Go back, go to more, go to Z calibrate, hit start, or abort. Okay, so calibrate, start, and we're saying end stop. Wait, no, probe not end stop. Only set the end stop, okay. End stop, cool. So now we're doing the thing. It's only doing one millimeter at a time, it looks like. Someone said probe, someone said... <laughs> Which one is it? You can do either one, but only do... Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm
All right, let me get some sort of paper. Um, all the paper I have is like medical bills. <laughs> um, I don't really want to use a medical bill, if I'm being honest. Let's see, let's try this. Use a. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna raise it a hair a bit more because this is a super thin piece of so except. Say configuration, continue. Okay. End stop is second bolt. And when you baby step, save to the Z end stop. Okay. So don't do any probe stuff, only, only end stop stuff. As far as offset goes, keep it on the same thing. Okay, so we're, I mean, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Let's give this, let's give this a go. It's not what I want to do. What is happening? Did it freeze? Oh, there we go. What's the difference between the sex bolt and the end stop? I thought they worked the same way. Probe uses clicky and compensates for different sheets. End stop does not, but it's okay if you're always using the same sheet. Got you, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this is the only sheet I'll be using. And if I do change it, it, it would be like <laughs> something tragic has happened. Um, so we're doing 2.4, 250. Yes, confirm. Discard. We'll do we'll do your swatch truck, um, zombie. Swatch. Where's the truck? All right, well, I guess swatch is too, too generic of a term. Oh, what's a swatch truck graphic? Oh my gosh. Sex pull is built a little bit. Gotcha, okay. Uh, allows you to adjust the Z height, interesting. When you move to tap, that clipper screen will make the calibration a one-time process sick. Yeah, we probably will end up doing tap because everyone seems to be swearing by it. And I feel like there's gotta be a reason. Um, oh, let's also do this. Let's set this up with a uh, clipper. Wait, there we go. Uh, it was already there. 192.168.160. Point, I think it was 119. Why isn't that working? Oh, test. Yes. Okay. And we need to name it. Uh, let's see. I don't know what to name it. <laughs> uh, even with tap, you still have different offsets for build sheets and filaments. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Um, is this swatch truck legit? I don't know what to name this printer. Uh, by the way, start code I linked to you uses. Oh, sweet. Okay. No, 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 300 is right. It's a 300 millimeter build plate. Uh, I'm just gonna call it uh, just, uh, uh, I don't know. We'll just call it <laughs> placeholder. Yay. <laughs> For right now, I'm good to go though. I think without using the start G code, I mean, there's gonna, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time uh, trying to calibrate and figure things out. 
Uh, we're just gonna go generic. Nope, this doesn't seem right. Placeholder, yay, bed type, high temp. Okay. We'll do, is there a purge line deep by default? I don't know. It'll probably not, right? Cause that would be in the purge. Let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Ah! I'm definitely nervous. <laughs> Add a skirt, you think? T oh yeah, cause there's no, yeah, that's right. Cause there's no freaking, all right, hold on. It's like emergency stop again. Oh no, I hit reboot. Oh, I meant to hit restart. All right, that's okay. Uh, skirt loops, yeah, we'll do two because there's not gonna be that purge line, so it's probably a good call. I'm gonna do camp, but I'm gonna do camp later on. For right now, I just wanna print, just wanna print this swatch truck. Do a kickflip. <laughs> Tony Hawk, hey, do a kickflip. All right, so it's, it's restarting. There we go. All right, let's do this. Yeah, camp's awesome. We're definitely going camp with this. There's no questions asked. Camp is happening. Do you need me to get a camp video? <laughs> yeah, if you know of anyone that's made a video on camp, I would I'd love, <laughs> I'd love to know. I wish we had the lights set up. I'll do, I'm gonna do the lights next. Uh, after the stream, I'm gonna end it after this. It's been, it's been four and a half hours and I, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm nearing, I'm going from like uh, happy to hangry. <laughs> so I need food at some point. Okay, bed's climbing, we're at 58C. All right, hot end's heating up. What movie did you watch? <clears throat> camp, camp, camp. You did great party work. Thank you, zombie. I really appreciate it. Hi, Chris. All right, we're at 160C, 170, climbing. Hmm, how was Indiana Jones? I forgot there was a new one. Thank you for the banana zombie. All right, let's get a little bit of a little air horn looking, a little cheering action going on. Here we go. I didn't wipe down the PEI, so hopefully it's got, it doesn't have too much oils on it. The bed? What about the bed? What about the bed? What about the bed? Delmar's scaring me. <laughs> Delmar's scaring me. What about the bed? Okay, we still need to raise that. No, no, thank you for the banana. You heated the nozzle nearly, oh, did I? Oh crap, okay. Did you level your <laughs> This wire, this is for the Nevermore. I'll, I'm gonna get it set up soon-ish, very soon. Probably by next week's stream, it'll be done. It'll definitely be done. Uh, there's like a list of things I need to do. <clears throat> we got 120 likes, sweet.
Oh, did I do a mesh? No, I didn't do a mesh. I was just going to go for it. It's just a small print in the center of the bed. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I will. Horizontal Z move. On, I will. <laughs> it's definitely... Um, what does the start code in the slicer look like? I'm... Samples exceeded sample tolerances. It failed. Okay, so what are, <laughs> let's do a few things really quick here. <laughs> so for starters, we need a different safe Z. So uh, clicky, clicky variables, variable safe Z and homing function. So this should be at least, let's go 35 higher. Oops. Uh, variable travel speed. What's the speed? What's the speed we want to adjust? Travel speed? How fast all other travel moves will be performed running these macros? Okay. So let's do this. 400 zombie says. All right. I think I'm fine with that. Click doc probe. Z builds will happen after. One millimeter clearance. Wait, 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 wait. The tolerances are under quad gantry leveling though, right? So not here. So I think I'm okay here. 25 there's, are oh, you saying 25 here is fine? Okay, so all I've adjusted is speed so far. Quad gantry leveling. Wait, where, where am I setting? This is not what I'm talking about changing. 400 for travel, dock, undock. Well, I want to figure out, I want to, I'll get, we'll get the speed. Oh, so probe under main config. I more want to make sure I don't destroy anything first. Okay, here we go. So X, Y, Z offset. This probe is not used for Z heights, only quad gantry leveling. Okay, so what are we wanting to change here? We're wanting to change one millimeter clearance. Sample tries sample tolerances. So instead of 0 0.06, go to 0 0.01. Sample retract distance, it should be fine, right? Speed. Where are we changing the height though? Like the, the amount of Z height, is it here we're saying? I thought it was under, I thought it was under clicky. under the quad gantry portion and bed mesh. So gantry corners, horizontal move, Z, okay. Change to 15. So horizontal, we're saying we want another five millimeters for here and for 0 0.01 for retry tolerances speed for is 400 safe <laughs> horizontal z move okay where is mesh though uh bed mesh here we go okay horizontal z move what did we, what did we do 15 Speed 400. Don't, uh, don't, yeah, I agree. Bed mesh will take care of anything and you will have less retries. D300 for middle of the road. 
Sorry, zombie. Okay. Save and close. And you said dock it first, so let's try to dock this again. Uh, dock probe. Okay, let's see if we can print this. I just want, I just want to, yeah, we'll, we'll bump it up. I just want to see it do the things correctly first before I have it do things incorrectly quickly. How's Windows? I use MX Linux. Uh, I'm primarily a Mac guy. I use my editing rig as a MacBook, and yeah, I'm primarily a Mac person. Uh, I just, I find Windows to be better for streaming. And I used to game quite a bit, and I don't anymore, so what is this? Oh yes, yeah, start, start G-code. Um, machine G-code. Bed temperature, nozzle temperature. Chamber, print start. So not, not a whole lot. Until you are confident in your setups, going, yeah, I agree. It's a great way to uh, destroy things quickly. Okay, we're heating up. Bed's already done. We're, extruder's nearly there. Yeah, I love Mac. Uh, I mean, again, primarily the reason I use computers well, it's a lot of it's video stuff, and I use Final Cut for all my editing, so it's a Apple only. It, it's I mean, I would argue that DaVinci Resolve is a better piece of software, but it's also more complex and way above anything I need. Like if I was doing Hollywood films, I would probably not use Final Cut, but for the stuff I do, like technical videos and stuff, it's just so efficient, um, and it works really well for me. Uh, you're getting no mesh and LDO Basic Start Macro. Okay. We should be fine with no mesh though, right, Delmar? I mean, if the Z, I set the Z for the center. Since I set um, the Z offset for the center of the bed and then we're just putting a splash chuck, I would imagine that's fine. Samples, so it's failing. The, um, the probe is failing. Nine point four eight six nine point four. Why is it failing? Didn't we set it to point zero one? Uh, I guess yeah. Oh, I uh, derp. I never. Yeah. I had already saved it, but I never restarted it. That's right. I didn't dock it. <laughs> It's docked. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I never, I never saved it. I've never used Apple products. I'm going to do the right to repair since they started. Yeah, you definitely aren't repairing Apple products. For me, it's a convenience thing. Like, uh, I use, I used to be much more like, back in the day, Android all the way and Windows is what I used. But now, like, efficiency is key for me. And I find the Apple OS to be extremely efficient for content creation stuff. The ability to, like, the way it all integrates together is beautiful. You can't repair it, though. <laughs> uh, you should need to dock it, right? Yeah, technically, I think it would have, it should have sensed that it was connected and been fine. But, um, making sure everything's fine repairing apple is no problem they offer self-service kit what do you mean well i think i think that uh she means that you it's not really something you can repair yourself in a lot of instances i mean i guess they have that kit thing now that you can rent or whatever but generally speaking if you need to repair an apple product you're going to a genius bar and having them do it i would say that's what the majority of everyone does i i tried linux I, it's just not for me like i it's it is 
for the way I work, it is incredibly inefficient. Like the amount of things you have to know to do things, I just it doesn't it doesn't make sense. I mean, I know like the people I know that use Linux love Linux, but yeah, it's it's just not <laughs> for the for what I need to do. It's just not okay. It's going fast right now. Boy, I need to make a Delta. Uh, low port of really Linux terminal is helpful. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean, I wish I knew more about Linux, especially because of all of the modding stuff and it, it would be just helpful. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, it's just not, for the video editing and content creation stuff, it, I, I don't know anybody that does that that uses Linux. And it, it's for a reason, it just isn't set up for, in my opinion, that. But again, I know people that use like GIMP, I think they have on Linux and, um, oh gosh. Um, we had a few users kill the probe after forgetting it was on there. Oh, interesting. GIMP is what I use for photo. Yeah, GIMP and then um, what's the, uh, God, the main graphic software that most people use on Linux is called Inkscape. Yeah, Inkscape. Yeah, I don't use, I used Adobe for a long time and I don't really like Adobe at all. Although they're like, their new AI stuff is super interesting, but uh, all photo stuff or graphics is primarily, um, God, what is the name of the, it's a one-time purchase. Um, Affinity, uh, Affinity Suite, I like. Okay, let's see how this goes. Nope, that's too close to the bed. <clears throat> I instantly killed it. <laughs> that is too close to the bed. I heard nozzle scraping. That is not what I want to hear. <clears throat> yeah, I should have probably just hit Z offset before I did any of that, but I think what I'm gonna do is, is just bump. So. It was definitely too close. So let's go uh, move home. Yeah, nozzle, nozzle was definitely too close on that. I didn't like the sound of brass on PEI. Um, okay, so going back here and going to more, going to Z calibrate. Why doesn't it have... Did it not save the offset that we set? We did end stop. And it looks like there's no offset saved, why? Yeah, it doesn't look like it saved through Clipper screen. Um, I can't bump the offset unless we're, oh, I can pump it. Okay, sick. So let's just go up like, uh, points. I think I'd like to go up point one. And we're wanting, so again, since the end stop didn't save, we want probe, right? Is what it sounds like. Because if we save it to probe, we're saying then it, it'll stick if we're switching sheets out. 
It did, for some reason it didn't save zombie. I don't know, when I looked right now on clipper screen, it showed zero to unstop. Okay, so we do want unstop, not probe. All right, let's see if this makes a difference. So we'll try it again, and then this time I'll be ready in the, in the um, interface to bump up, bump it up if we need to. Okay, always end stop. Well, I don't fully understand that. I, I don't fully understand that. <laughs> Earlier, someone was saying that if you do the offset to your probe, just remember to forget, just remember to forget that if you move your Z to clicky. Yeah, it's kind of confusing to me, the, uh, So stepper position and stop shows negative 0.2, which would have been from what we just set. So maybe it was there, I don't know. I'm a little bit confused, but I'll be ready to bump it if need be. <clears throat> All right, Z offset and Make sure the nozzle is heated. It's heated before homing Z and then it homes Z after it's logging entry leveling. Gotcha. Because of the fact that it's using the nozzle, it needs to make sure it's hot. So that way the filament isn't, um, there's not filament on the nozzle then, right? Screwing up the Z height. Thank you, zombie. <laughs> Fingers crossed this is the one. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's been a long, it's been a long stream. Uh, bed heated to, bed is, yeah, yeah. Nozzle's at 220 right now and bed's at 60. So it's basically what I said in Slicer. Yeah, hopefully the quad gantry stuff uh, leveling will work better once the belts aren't evenly tightened and they're not very tight because I was anticipating tensioning them, tensioning them uh, after, which I haven't done yet. We've got to be getting close. Nine point five six. It will get better in time. You have to break the belts. Man, <laughs> come on. It did so much, it was, it did it in way fewer tries the last couple of times. 
you can see the bend in the front left. The bend in the front left? What do you mean? In the front left belt. Oh, you're saying from it not being tensioned enough? Yeah, too many retries. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. That sucks, it failed. Uh... We're gonna try it one last time and see if it goes. If not, I'm probably calling it and then I'll, I'll just end up uh, I'm messing with it between now and next week and next week we'll just hang out and maybe do a little bit of tuning or just print and hang out. Gotcha. You're saying that right here from the camera's angle, you can see that it's not, there's not enough tension. It's loose. Yeah, they, they definitely need more tensioning. Uh, one of the plans of what I'll likely do later on tonight is download the, or I think I have the app, but use the, the app to test the frequencies of all of them. That way I can try to get them as close as possible because even before, um, I didn't visually see that, but just feeling the belts before, I knew that they were definitely not even as much as I tried to get them even prior. Let's see if we can somehow get lucky and get it to go through. <clears throat> Oh, you're saying right here, right? I don't want to move my fingers, but. I used to do the Micron Z belts by Heel X, Y, by app. Well, I just feel like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna use the app, I might as well just do them all. I tension them with the docs tell you and I've only tensioned Z belts once. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, maybe we won't get lucky and I'll have to just adjust the belts before we try again. That belt's probably, that's probably the main one that's causing the issue. What's our tolerance range? So 0.02. I'll let it run two more cycles. If it doesn't get it, I'll probably just call it. Last one. What was our tolerances? 0 0.016. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna hit it. I don't think it's happening. I'm gonna call it. So I will, um, I'll post an update tonight because something tells me I'm probably gonna hang out for a little while and then later on, I like, we're so close that I'm not gonna be able to just be like, yeah, I'll just take care of this tomorrow or, or later on. So later on tonight, I'll tension all the Z belts, the A and B belt and get a print running. And then also play around with the LEDs on the tool head and see if I can get Nevermore installed. Um, that's what I'm probably gonna do later on. Um, I've only touched my X twice because I added tap and took it apart. Yeah, I am. Um, are we saying we wanna try it because we've been hanging out? It would be probably easier to do off stream anyway so you can focus. Yeah, 
it's been like it's been five hours and normally we stream for like three so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's due to lack of trying it just was more things it's always like that like I thought that I did the electrical and that everything else would be really quick but the Nevermore stalled us and then there was just quite a few things but we've made a ton of progress um I mean we are so close to being there so yeah next week's stream is just strictly going to be a we're printing we're chilling maybe we'll put panels on but if nothing else like it's going to be a really laid back stream before we start the next build so thank you um thank you everybody like <laughs> everybody's chimed in but definitely like aaron and delmar thank you very much for all of the recommendations and pointers um there's just a lot <laughs> there's a lot i mean the guide helps a ton but the fact that there's certain elements that i needed to pull from ldo and certain things from other locations like it's just there's a lot so i, I appreciate everybody chiming in and helping out and hanging out for as long as it was because again i know this was substantially longer than one of the normal streams um but yeah i'll get next week's stream scheduled likely tonight if not tonight then tomorrow and uh it'll be boogieing by then i this is going to this is going to be like my primary project until uh i've got it functioning the way i want it to so <clears throat> But yeah, I appreciate it. appreciate it all. Thank you, everyone, again, for hanging out, for liking uh, all the tips, recommendations, the new members. Um, PF, thank you for the gifted memberships earlier on. And yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful night. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll either later on today or tomorrow, we'll be posting some stuff in the live stream channel uh, when I've got this thing printing. So I am uh, Aaron and Delmar. I'm not sure. <laughs> So anyways, have a great night, everybody, and I will see you all hopefully next week. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone.